Welcome everyone to the Ultimate Autonomy Experience. I'm your host, Thomas Nervas, and today my special guest is Renee Hamilton, and I'd like to introduce Renee. He is an entrepreneur and founder of Inner Soul Technologies. He is an artist, photographer, teaches quantum metaphysical psychology. He is a life coach, systems researcher, and clairvoyant with a unique ability to intuitively see into people's mind patterns and emotional patterns that cause destructive tendencies in their lives. So today's topic of discussion is dismantling the illusion of the physical reality. And I have some questions for Renee today. And we will review questions from the audience participating today. So uh, thanks for participating. And you can definitely leave comments and questions in this live stream. OK, so Renee, uh, first question today. Just me just tell you a bit about myself first. Yeah, uh, so so uh, here we go. Uh, can you share with the audience some background about your life experience and what caused you to basically question and dismantle the illusion of the physical reality and what that means to you? Well, uh, I'll just start off by, uh, by uh, saying that I... Um if you want to find out a little more information about me while you're watching this live stream here, you can take a look at my website, which is innersoultech.com. That's www.innersoultech, innersoultech.com. That's short for Inner Soul Technologies. And that's a spiritual... Uh, scientific technology that I created to enhance the life force energy of all of creation, of all of all of uh, creation itself. So I developed these little tools, pendants, and I have a whole variety, like 50 different ones, and uh, bracelets and um, things you put on the back of a cell phone uh, that help uh, deal with the uh, negative energies and disharmonic waveforms that are coming from the cell phone, like little patches like, like that for uh, the EMF and whatnot. So I have these pendants, bracelets, uh, power plates, all sorts of different technologies I created that are pretty powerful. They're interdimensional technologies. And so I created these, this, uh, this uh, new technology to bring forward to creation. Uh, it's uh, based on light, light, sound, and vibration. And... Uh, I consult all around the world and talk to people about a uh, higher understanding of reality, how it all works, how manifestation, and and really there are secrets to reality that people think you have to go into a cave for 40 years uh, to learn how to understand yourself or the mind and whatnot, and that's just, that's just not the case. It's not, it's not as mysterious in terms of finding uh, where source is or finding the, the source of truth or finding God, if you want to call it that, it's that it's not a mysterious thing. It's sources everywhere. So uh, we just need to look at reality properly. So that's why I'm here is to just give a different viewpoint on reality that you may have not heard before. And just hearing these concepts, these different ideas may unlock your consciousness to other worlds and other dimensions that are right here, right now. And it's happened. Some people uh, literally... Uh, open up to other worlds and dimensions is right while I'm talking. So it happens. Um, so definitely I'd like to start with that question. You said, Renee, uh, can you share some background about how I came to be and what brought this all about? Yeah, what caused you to question and dismantle the nature of reality? What, what caused you to even ask the question in the first place? Like, what is this? And... What are we and what are we doing? Well, I would uh, I would say that I wouldn't say there was a cause that caused me to question anything. Uh, my first uh, recollections of using this body and being here uh, on this dream world called Earth. Um, upon my first awareness of being in a body here or being sort of here on Earth, I recall. Um, 
that I was going to school or preschool, uh, like grade three or four, or sorry, age three or four, somewhere around there. And I remember leaving my house and I walked across the street and directly across the street was my school. I mean, like literally across the street, front door. So I remember going to school the first day at age three or something, four. And I remember seeing all the students in the classroom, like 40 kids. And I remember feeling shy. I remember feeling like, whoa, I don't know what to say to them or how do I interact with them? And I remember in that instant, I remember feeling and knowing that I need to overcome all obstacles in reality. I knew I needed to not be shy. I knew I needed to, to just integrate. So I, I was aware of awareness. Like I was aware I was aware and I knew I was not um, the body. So there was never a point in which I was, um, there was never a cause. It was just the way I was, uh, I showed up here. I showed up here seeing that the world was mysterious and magical and everything was beautiful and just mind boggling, just mind boggling beauty is what I experienced as a child, like, like beyond comprehension, like nothing here on earth even compares to even a minute of the beauty that I experienced uh, growing up, per se. Uh, so there wasn't, again, there wasn't a cause. It just, uh, there was just a, recognize, a recognition, uh, a realization that uh, those people around me seemed to be, um, not everyone, but a lot of adults and even some kids and whatnot seemed to be very close-minded. They seemed to be very... Um, narrow vision they seem to be very serious arguing fighting and and i would and i didn't understand why they were all up like what the what was the big deal like right. life was just amazing so i couldn't figure out why people were so not happy or not loving or close-minded i was just baffled why is everyone like literally everyone like even my own family members everyone seemed to be more close-minded than me not that i'm not that at the age of five or six or seven or eight that I knew how to express that, but it was just, I could just see it. Right. So at the, around the age of nine or so, I, I decided um, that I'm going to um, dedicate my life to undoing or figuring out what's wrong with everyone. Like, what's wrong with the world? Like, what's <laughs> going on here? Like, right. And so at that age, uh, I was just uh, watching. I was watching the world uh, do its thing. Uh, so around the age of five, so according to ages right now, I'm, uh, or this body is 46. But uh, that's, age is just a number. Um, so at around the age of five years old, my mother, who uh, uh, was very open-minded and she was into a lot of higher mind thinking and what whatnot, and in, also into natural the healings and whatnot. She had taught me how to meditate around the age of five years old, and uh, right away I knew that was that was my calling. I, I knew the mystical world was my calling. So uh, initially, she attempted to um, get us to meditate, me and my brothers, with our eyes closed, like a guided visualization of some sort. And I noticed uh, the first few times I did that. I had a lot of trouble visualizing with my eyes closed. So I just left my eyes open and I, I'm i able to visualize with my eyes open way more clearly and more powerfully than with my eyes closed. So um, while my brothers were meditating with their eyes closed, I had my eyes open. And after the first few, few times of meditating, I decided I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do an experiment and I'm going to see if I can meditate my whole life, like just 24 hours a day. And what I mean by meditating is I don't mean I'm closing my eyes or and, and sort of visualizing things. Um, I'm really sort of stepping back beyond my body almost in my imagination and looking at the world and looking at the thoughts and looking at the feelings and looking at every sort of phenomena that passes through my awareness and just watching everything with no judgment and just learning 
what's going on, you know. So what you're picking up from your environment, the senses, sight, hearing, yes. touch, touch, taste, uh, sound, sound, and, and there's a lot more. The sixth sense. The sixth sense is hearing thoughts. Right. So there's six senses that make up what we call reality, physical reality experience. Taste, touch, hearing, sight, sound, and the hearing of thoughts. So we, we've been taught there's five senses, and that's a problem because there's six. And the sixth sense that we have not been told about, that sixth sense itself is, for lack of a better term, not knowing about that sixth sense has confused humanity beyond all comprehension. Um, so, um, for example, let me give an example of what that, the impact of that not knowing what that sixth sense is and how it has jacked our minds com beyond all com comprehension. And I, it seems as though this, it was intentionally left out that we had this sixth sense. And a lot of people right now are saying, oh, this sixth sense, it's like you're psychic, it's like ESP or your third eye. No, that's not what I'm talking about. The sixth sense is, is the hearing of thoughts. So I often use this, this analogy when I, when I talk to people about senses, about how to understand what your senses are. So we have the sense of vision that allows us to see, to see objects. It allows us to see shape and color and form. Okay, so we have the sense of vision. If that sense of vision was gone, somehow the electrical circuits were turned off, there's no vision. There's just simply no vision. So in order to perceive something or be aware of something, you need a sense in order to perceive it. No, no sense of vision, you can't see anything. So imagine um, you and I are, it's a hot summer day and it's uh, 2 p.m. in the afternoon and we decided to go for a walk in our neighborhood. And we're walking along, you know, just talking, going for a nice stroll. And in the distance, we smell a barbecue. We're like, oh, someone's cooking the barbecue. Someone's got some ribs or, you know, burgers on the grill. And we can smell that. And as we're walking further and further, the smell dissipates. So it, it, there is no smell. Suddenly the smell showed up for a minute or so. We're like, oh, someone's on the barbecue. And then we walk away and the, and the smell is gone. So we know that the smell of the barbecue is temporary. It's not permanent. And we know that smell is not us. We, we know it's just, oh, okay, it's gone. It was a temporary um, sensation. Your senses temporarily pick it up and it's gone. So we're not out there saying, saying to ourselves, hey, I smelt the barbecue, so I must be the barbecue. We're not saying that. We know that we're just temporary, temporarily sensing it. Okay. So with that same analogy, imagine thinking that everything that you smelled was you. you smell the barbecue. Oh, there I am. There's a barbecue. Oh, there's some fries. I smell the fries. Oh, I smell the flowers. I'm the flower. It'd get very confusing because there'd be no sense of stability. So when at the same time, we have these thoughts. Thoughts are senses. We're sensing thoughts. We're sensing them, okay? We're not, we are not thinking the thoughts. It's something that's passing through our mind, okay? And <clears throat> imagine that every thought passing through your mind you thought was coming from you or you thought was you. Wouldn't that get, wouldn't it be confusing? It'd be like thousands of things per day. You're like, oh, that's me, that's not me, that's whoa. You know, you'd be all, all confused because it's something we're sensing. We're sensing our thoughts. Now, the, the problem is, is 99% of people out there think they are, they are the thoughts. They think, I am the thought. That, that voice speaking is me. And it's not. So imagine that, vo imagine <clears throat> you thinking that one of your senses was you. Like, like your sense of vision. Everything you saw, like, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me. Again, it'd be confusing. Imagine everything that you touched. Okay, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me. It'd be crazy. But we do the same thing with our thoughts. We have these thoughts all day long, and we're like, oh, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me. Nonsense. And that, uh, by us thinking that, that the thoughts is us, 
now we have identified our actual identity with this voice in our head. With, or who knows even where it's coming from? It's, it feels like it's in our head. So there's this invisible voice that's coming out of who knows where. We don't know where it's coming from. And we think that's us. And if we think that's us, then that's an interesting question. Because if that voice is you, then I urge all of you out there to try and turn it off. If, it, if that voice is you, then turn it off. You'll, you'll realize, hey, I can't turn that voice off. Do you know why I can't turn it off? Because it ain't you. If it was you, you'd just turn it off. You'd just say, shut off. And it would turn off. You have control over it. You have control over it. Obviously, it's not you, but you have, you have zero control over that. And it just keeps on going off like popcorn, popping. All, popcorn yeah, all day long. All day long. The average person has 60 to 90,000 thoughts per day. 95% of those are the same thoughts they had the day before and the day before and the day before. The big mystery here is... And, and this takes observation. Like this, you don't need to study to, to perform what I'm going to tell you next. We just need to watch our reality. We need to just watch our reality. And when we watch our reality, um, we will see that as someone speaks to us or we speak to them, each word we speak, each word, creates an image in our mind, okay? So if you if you say the word bird, as soon as you say that, automatically this image of a bird pops in our mind, you know, a little yellow Tweety bird or, you know, something. So for each word, there's an image pops in your mind, okay? So as you're speaking, there's pictures, okay? Pictures, picture, picture, picture. Now when you get pictures in motion, you got motion picture, which is Pictures moving, a movie, okay, moving images. So when someone is speaking to you, you're seeing a movie of those images, okay? So we are like the internet, computer, computer. I'm going to send telepathic or vibrational information over this communicative line called voice, bird. Okay. Your 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 mind takes that vibration mm -hmm. that, that says bird and then creates an image out of it. Bro. Okay, just the vibration created an image. So as we speak, we see these images. Okay, and that's a little like a movie in our mind, like a little YouTube movie in our mind as someone's speaking. And that movie, we, for whatever reason, we think, for the most part, that's real and true. We, we think the movie in our mind is solid reality. When it's not, it's just, it's just light taking shape in our mind, creating images. And so when people tell us stories that sound good or sound like something that we like, we tend to believe that story. And by believing that story, we are now under the spell of that story. Now we are captured by the story. Now we're imprisoned into the story. And what I mean by that is whenever you get a belief Whenever you get a belief, it's almost impossible to let go of that belief or to drop it. I mean, take any belief you have right now and try and just ignore it, try and forget it, try and delete it out of your mind right now. Good luck. So beliefs are kind of like fish hooks. Once you get a belief, good luck on unhooking that out of your mind because it's not an easy task to just undo a belief. So you better be very careful about what you believe because you might end up believing things that you don't like. We all have beliefs we, we do like, we do enjoy, but we also have beliefs we don't enjoy. And how are we going to choose which ones we do like and don't like? It's not like we can just look at our inventory of our mind and say, okay, i got 10 beliefs there I like. Okay, I'll keep those. And these 14, no, oh, no, oh, delete, no, delete, delete. That, I mean, it'd be nice if, if that was the way it worked, but um, beliefs are programmed. They're like, they're imprinted, right? Like getting a, a brand, right, from a hot iron or whatever, right? It's, it's imprinted. There is a way to unimprint it. However, that requires losing interest in your belief. If I still have an interest in a belief, then I'm not going to want to let it go. If someone tries to 
to take the belief or remove it, and I still have an interest in it, I'm going to fight for that belief. So likewise, I use this analogy as well. Let's just say you, Thomas, are you're online and you're on Match.com and you find this woman uh, who matches with you and you guys are just, you guys seem to have a good vibe and you guys start seeing each other, physically seeing each other, hanging out for about a month or so. And after, you're just testing the waters and after about a month or so, you're like, you know what? I'm just not feeling the vibe. We're, we're just, something ain't right. You know, we're just not vibing. So I'm just going to go my own way and that's it. You just, you just lose interest. You lose interest. It's no effort for you to stop calling. It's no effort for you to stop emailing or texting. You just simply don't contact. You just simply lose interest. And that person is goes away. They just There's no energy being given in, in that direction. So likewise, with our beliefs, once we lose interest in them, they just go away because no nothing's there to keep it going. So in order for a belief to continually exist, it, we need constant attention and constant focus on that belief, or it will just fade away into the background. So that's why beliefs always repeat themselves thousands of times per day in your head, and you can't shut it off. So beliefs are just like a, it's like a spell. It's like a hypnotic, psychic spell, trap, whatever you want to call it. It's It locks your mind onto one storyline and will not let it go. You li Some people literally go their whole lives with war this one particular belief and refuse to let it go. And that's all there is to it. So um, we have to start to analyze our mind. We can't just believe things and assume things, assume how the world works, assume who we are, who we say we are, assume things are the way they say they are. We need to actually find out for ourselves. We can't just expect some god from the clouds with a magic wand or something to come and, and show us or take us out of this state of misery without us figuring out. There's, there's, there's no free rides to understanding ourselves. We, we're, we are ourselves, uh, at least here on earth, we seem to be ourselves here for 100 years or 80 years or whatever. So... How is it possible to go your whole life, you know, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten decades, and still not get to know yourself if you already are yourself? Like, what else are you doing in the meantime that would distract you from getting to know yourself? When you are yourself, it's not like you you're you are part time and oh, I only have five hours to get down to know myself today. No, it's twenty four hours a day forever. So where's the where where does the lack of interest come from in getting to know ourselves? Because if I'm driving a car and I'm a, and I'm a mechanic, if I'm a mechanic and I'm driving a car and my car breaks down, I'm not really that that concerned because I know I can look underneath the hood and see what's going on. I know I can figure it out. I know there's a way to figure it out. So I'm not concerned. I'm not freaking out if the car breaks down because I understand the car. Likewise, if I'm a human and there's some mental issues, emotional, psychological, physical, financial, whatever, whatever the issues are with being a human, and I don't know what it means to be human, and I don't know how my mind operates, and I don't know how my body operates, or my health, or the immune system, or my brain, or speech, or if I don't know how I operate in any way whatsoever, and there's a problem, then I'm going to freak out because I have no idea how to even navigate myself. So now I have to rely on other people who supposedly know more than I know about, about myself. And I have to give them money or energy or trust that they're, what they're saying is true and trust that they're not trying to scam me and trust that they know what they're doing and trust that what they're, what they're saying is safe. So that's like your car breaking down and just having to trust the mechanic. They trust that they're not ripping you off and trust that... What they're saying is true and trust that they're not doing extra work or scamming you or overcharging you. So getting to know yourself, you don't have to rely on so-called external information in order to just enjoy life and understand your, your, your own self. So it's not, any, it's not difficult. You just watch your mind. You just watch, what you're, watch what's being said, watch what's being thought, watch what's being imagined. 
watch what what actions the body's taking based on certain things and just watch the mind. The mind has two voices. It has the voice of lies and has the voice of truth. So get to know both. Don't don't just get to know truth because then you're not going to understand what a lie is or how a lie works. So you got to understand a lie because there's the contrast. The contrast. Can you talk a little bit about the divine dichotomy? So the divine dichotomy is essentially the absolute experiencing itself in the world of the relative. So just imagine if there was only darkness mm-hmm. and there was nothing but that, mm-hmm. there would be no contrast. And so in order for an experience to happen, mm-hmm. there requires to be light and darkness. Sure. So with this divine dichotomy, it allows experience it it allows uh, introspection. It allows uh, discernment, uh, sure. morality, all of these. Sure. Well, I'll just start off by by just giving a little background. Uh, I did not. I grew up in a different version of Earth than this version. So there are infinite parallel dimensions of reality in every direction, in every moment, and. The earth, version of Earth that I grew up in was a different version of Earth than this one. And I mean like I was in a different reality of Earth. So the reality of Earth that I was in up until the age of 12. So at the age of 12 was the first time I showed up here. But I will get into that very, I'm going to I'll condense this very, very, very deeply. From my growing up here, Everything appeared to be made of light. I mean, it appeared to be made of, like, translucent, uh, glowing light, but made of um, trillions of colors, colors I I still have not seen yet here on on Earth. Uh, Everything appeared to be made of intelligent light that was awake and aware. So when I I look at someone's face or body or arm, the arm itself would, would look like it's infinite like there'd be light sparkling through just zillions of little sparkling lights that i could see in like the bones the tissue whatever i could see right through everything everything looked like it was a celebration like the walls were alive spiraling energy the everything the food was alive and with faces talking to me like yeah renee blah. like it was it was a carnival. The whole world was amazing. The sky, the, everything tasted amazing. Sounds, everything sounded amazing. TV looked amazing. Everything was just a parrot. It was like heaven on earth. It was like mind-boggling. Everything appeared to be um, together. Like a painting, how a painting is, everything blends together. That's what everything looked like. Everything was kind of an ocean of infinity blending together in different combinations, creating shapes, creating shapes of humans, creating shapes of dogs and cats and cars and trees and trucks and motorcycles. So, yeah, reality was this one, and it was this big celebration, and everything felt good. Everything felt loving, and there was this absolute... It wasn't like I was a human who felt love. It was as though I was love itself experiencing being a human. It, it wasn't like I'm a human. Oh, I feel love one, once in a while. Like my whole being was love. And, and that extended in every direction. And it, it just, it was everything. So at one point, uh, at the age of 12, I went, to, I went to go rest one night. And I had my family, the same family I have now, I had then. But everyone and everything was made out of light. There was, there was no physicalness. I never even saw physicalness until the age of 12. So one day I woke up. Uh, from the rest and I noticed everything looked different. I looked at the walls and suddenly they were like solid like hard and there was no light There was no movement like there was everything was moving All the time like everything and there was no movement and I looked at my hands and arms and I'm like what like everything looked solid like opaque like I couldn't see through walls anymore. I couldn't see I couldn't see in other dimensions. I couldn't there was like I was it was like I was kicked out of heaven. There was instant depression. There was this voice. I, there was a voice I'd never even heard before. I'd never even heard that voice in the head before until that day. And the first thing it said is, 
I don't know. It was one of a few things. It was like, oh, you got to survive. I think that was one of the first thoughts. You got to survive. I never even had that thought before. It was just, I didn't have any voice in my head before. It was like silent. It was like inner, it was like peaceful, magicalness. And then that next day it was like cold. Just, just this voice like, you better survive. You got to go to school. You got to get a job. You got to get like all these things I got to do to survive. And I was like, whoa. And uh, I, I walked out of my house and I'm just like, what the hell is going on here? I just couldn't, I was a babble man. Like literally being infinite to limited the next day. And what I mean by infinite, I use this example. Okay. So imagine you and your friends are going camping and you guys reach this nice place place in the mountains or whatever and all you guys hey Diana <laughs> uh, all you guys uh, set up your set up your tents and you decide to go for a walk you're like hey everyone let's go for a walk all of our tents are set up now let's go for a walk so everyone goes for a walk and your tent is safe and once you set up a tent you can go walk and hike for eight hours and come back and your tent's still gonna be there okay so so when you have a tent, you're able to leave the tent and come back to it, the tent's still there, okay? So think of that as your mind. Think of your mind as like the tent. So <clears throat> before the age of 12, I had a tent. The tent was this physical body or was a body. Now, I could leave the tent for as long as I wanted, for months, weeks, years, whatever. And as soon as I wanted to focus back on the body, the body would, would, would show up. Okay, so I, I, I was free to roam the universe at will forever, but and whenever I wanted to think of a body, it would just show up, okay? But what happened after the age of 12 is I was stuck in the body. Like, I was, there was no more traveling, traveling around the universe at will. I was stuck in the body. Almost like us going camp, uh, camping, and we all wake up in the morning, and none of us can leave our tents. Imagine, imagine being stuck in, in your tent and you're like, wait a second, like I gotta get in my tent. And that, and it's like that for the next 30 years, it, it'd be inconceivable. But that's kind of what happened to me. I was free in the universe, like free everywhere. And then one day, stuck in the body, just boom, body show up and I was stuck in it. And I was like, what? No explanation, no, uh, not, you know, just figure it out on your own. <laughs> so that's pretty much what I did. I decided to figure it out on my own. I figured out, hey, what happened? How, what's going on? I need to reverse engineer reality in order to figure out what's going on. And I knew I could do it because I knew I've already been meditating for seven years with my eyes open. And my, I was what my mother taught me how to use my imagination to travel to other worlds, like astral traveling. When I was six years old, I think grade one or grade two, we did a show and tell at school. And for show and tell, I sat down and talked to the teacher and all the students about astral traveling at age age six or seven and everyone is fascinated they're all like whoa you know there's like this is like 1980 man you know they haven't heard of that kind of stuff before you know so um this has been my whole life it's not like something i do it's my whole life my mother raised me on herbs and uh, good food so i've had prescription pills i think once in my whole life and that was just for some eye surgery i had to get some pills that numb the nerves or whatever it was so they can do surgery that's it. I haven't, I've taken Tylenol once or twice in my whole life. Like every, every, every time I had some sort of issue, my mother would get something called Yarrow. That's Y-A-R-R-O-W, Yarrow Root, a rare, uh, and then you just dash that into, uh, hey, Hedda, and we ra uh, throw that in some water, boil it, and start drinking that, and it's blood, a blood purifier. It just feels yeah, flu, fevers, weird stuff with the body. Two, three days gone permanently. So I just barely ever gotten sick. You know, I get a cold like once every five years, like in that sort of range. I've been very high energy, very clean. The body's clean. I've been, been drinking distilled water for 25 years. Um, so when I was like 20 years old, I, I, I just saw a water distiller demonstration at West Edmonton Mall. And I just knew intuitively that the pipes all the way from the wherever the water treatment sewage plant is and all the way from the pipes to your house, there's no way all those pipes and everything can be 100% clean. And I just thought to myself, 
And I didn't know about conspiracy theories at this time. I just thought, there's no way the water from wherever it is coming to my house is going to be clean. It's got to be some sort of erosion or something in the pipe. So I better get a water water distiller. And I did. I was working as a waiter. I, I made payments for like eight, nine months or a year. And I, I, the guy brought it to me and was good to go. So there's been a lot of like, uh, not a lot of uh, residue or toxins put through the body here uh, for my whole life, it's been very, very pure in that in that respect. Um, so you know, uh, at the age of twelve, once I snapped into the physical body, there was obvious depression right away. It was it was boredom, boredom beyond all comprehension. I have never been bored. No one, <laughs> and probably the history of creation has been as bored as I was. Once I snapped into the physical body at the age of twelve, it was absolute sh shocking boredom. There was it was absolutely heaven in every millisecond. And from heaven to hell, bleh, like that. So I became depressed, and I started to look. I started to do. I started to think of ways to entertain myself. And the only thing I could think of was playing video games with my friend. You know, we'd go get money and fifty cents or a buck, twenty-five, play a video game. But hey, I didn't. I, there's only a limited amount of money you got. So I decided, hey, I've already spent my my weekly allowance. I need to go and get more money. So I started stealing. I started stealing purses, pickpocketing, me and my friend pick for years. Years. I was a master, master pickpocketer. Master. <laughs> I went to arcades with my friends and we'd sit there for hour, 12 hours a day, pickpocket people to get money to do things. But I was so bored. I needed money to do something to make me unbored. And it, that's, it's, that's just the way it is. And I'm sure that's the way it is for a lot of people. A lot of people aren't intentionally out to steal it. A lot of people are bored. They, did, they need to get money to do drugs or something because they're just bored because their thoughts are the same thoughts every day. And there's nothing changing. There's nothing new. You can get bored, but like nothing's new. And if you're having 60, 000, 60 to 90,000 thoughts per day, which are the same thoughts the day before, day before, day before, there's nothing new. So, yeah, we're bored. We're picking our noses, thinking, okay, video games, sex, drug, you know, movies, TV, and Netflix. Like, what? What am I going to do to, like, get some stimulation here, you know? And that's why people seek a lot of drama, because there's just nothing, nothing going on. you got to make something going. <laughs> so, uh, the Very boredom, yeah, problem. yeah. The oh, boredom oh, here oh. Is, is absolutely staggering. The earth is just, it's just... It's not that Earth is a problem. It's that the, the state of mind of people is so repetitive and so boring and so uninnovative and so uncreative. And I'm not saying the people are that way. I'm just saying that it's portrayed that way. So we don't have a lot of incentive to be creative or to be inventive or to, or to be to have the money to, to invent things and resources. Things are very seem to be very limited here. So we seem to not be as creative as we could. And I think that's a problem with a lot of people is we're all come here and we have these hopes and dreams and wishes and we want to become doctors and we want to astronauts or we want to go to other dimensions and we want to like do all these magical things. But our society says, hey, you need money, you have, you have government regulations, you need this, you need that. Yeah, you know, and here we are, we're like, fuck, I have this mind, full imagination, full of main things I want to do, travel the world, fly through the air, but I can't do shit, I'm stuck in a body, everything's boring, I pay taxes, I gotta do this, I gotta go to work, it's, like, why am I even here, like, this is a waste of space, because I've always, we have all this potential, but no one's doing shit, so, that being said, uh, we need newness, we need newness, in order to break the oldness or break the patterns of oldness or to even make change. Without newness, there's no change. Period. Escape the boredom time loop. Oh. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's... Even right now, I'm still like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I'm not joking about that either. Like, it's... Yeah, uh, you know, that's one... I'd probably say that's one of the, the one drawbacks of being aware of the truth is that what's happening here is so opposite. It's it's just mind-boggling. Uh, so there is this contrast between oh heaven and which is the unity state of consciousness and this consciousness. So before age of twelve, I was 
far as I know, I was God. And I don't mean God as in, like, I created each one of you particularly, but I mean, I was God consciousness. There was no concept of being human. There's no concept of being Renee. There's no concept of limitation. It was simply just a foreign concept until the age of 12 and then boom, human. Right. Can I just touch base on that? Yes. Comment. Yes. Okay. So um, here, I just wanted to share a little bit about uh, one of the most famous Advaitic saints of the 20th century, Sri Ramana Maharshi. Mm -hmm. And he has this amazing uh, simple teaching. Mm -hmm. And he says, know yourself and all suffering will subside. The world exists through thought, just like what you're talking yes. about, popcorn thoughts. Yes. Know the source of thought, and all thought will subside, revealing the ultimate truth. Mm -hmm. You are Brahman. In fact, Brahman alone is, and your belief that you are an individual is a complete illusion and the source of your suffering. Absolutely. There is <laughs> abs this 100%. And see, we were told stories about reality when we were younger or seemingly younger. Um, we were read stories by our parents. We were told it by the television, radio, comic books, magazines, teachers, schools, documentaries. So these stories that we were told as a child, we visualize them in our minds. Okay, we visual as the parents were speaking or the TV or we visualize these stories and we're like, yeah, I like that story, Red Red Robin Hood and Jack and Joe up the hill and all these little things. You know, but and, and us loving stories and, and watching movies in our mind has never stopped. You know, now the stories we listen to as adults is the nightly evening news. And the only difference is, is that the stories that we're listening to when we're younger were happy stories. But now the stories we're listening to right now are unhappy stories. That's it. The only difference is one was a happy story and one was an unhappy story. And, and the second difference is, is that as an adult, we believe the stories to be true, whereas as a child, they were just like imaginations that were just came in and gone. They was all, it was all temporary. And now when we hear something, we say, that's true. It's solid. It's a real story. It's solid. My thoughts are solid, real things that really exist. Where do you think this idea came from that everything is solid? That teaching, where do you think that came it's, from? It's not a teaching. I, from, from my observation, just based on my consciousness, observing physical reality, it appeared. And, and from my perspective, there is no physical reality. There there seems to be a there seems to be a interaction with with our imagination and we call that physical reality so i'll just hold on to that thought about the about about where the thoughts come from or how to how to, how to understand that um our mind is infinite so within our consciousness or within our mind right now Everyone out there, you have unlimited imagination. There's no limit to your imagination right now. There's just no beginning or ending. It's just unlimited. And everyone you could just see within your own mind, there's no limit. There's no ending, no beginning. It's just this ocean of images or whatever. Limitlessness. Limitlessness. So that imagination, which is unlimited, unlimited, that means no limits. If your imagination is unlimited, which you acknowledge right now, and I acknowledge, and I'm sure most of you do, if it's unlimited, then tell me where your imagination is not. Where is your imagination not? If it's unlimited, there's no limit. Where is it not? That means that this moment is your imagination. Why is, it, why is this moment your imagination? Why? Because in this moment, you have, you're using your mind, you're using your imagination, to put a name, a label, a description, some sort of meaning to this moment. You're sort of giving meaning to this moment. You're, you're sort of formulating an idea of what this moment is, what it means to you, what you're getting out of it. That's all being done by your imagination. How you interpret reality, how you interpret these six senses is your imagination. You could hear 
a loud bang and say, oh, there's a car crash. Or you can say, oh, you know, I dropped a vase on the ground. Or, oh, the, you know, something exploded. So we're using our imagination in every moment to sort of uh, give an explanation of what's happening. Okay, so our reality is our imagination. If, if I imagine that this, this is a banana and I really visualize this, it, in my mind, it will appear to be a banana because I, now I'm visualizing a banana. See, visualizing means vision. To visualize means that you are creating a vision, okay? Whereas a belief, okay, is a non-visualization. It's sort of a repetition. It's... It's a repeating of an image. It's not a new creation. So based on what, what you said earlier about, about beliefs. Where did the belief come from? Where did the belief that, come that from? That this is solid. Solid, solid. So where, where does solid reality come from? Okay, so this is what I've noticed. This is direct observation from this awareness right here. Okay, so think of yourself as sitting in a car waiting to get into a garage to park your car. You know, like you're going to a doctor's appointment and they have that big arm and you got to pay your money and then the arm lifts up and your car can drive through. Okay, so imagine this, this arm as a belief, a belief about, you know, apples or oranges. Now, think of the car as you and you want to get, you want to get past the belief. So you, you pay your two dollars and the gate opens and then you drive through and then the gate closes. So this is the apples and oranges, the belief about them. Now what if this gate was to go up and down once every minute? Then you'd have to drive your car in within that minute. Okay, so no, no problem. But let's say that thing goes up and down once every 30 seconds. Well you better drive your car in quick because that thing can come smashing down on, on your car. Now, once every five seconds, two seconds, one second, boom, 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 boom. This, this belief is now becoming more frequent, okay? So the more frequent something becomes, the more solid it appears, okay? The more I, the more you see something showing up in your reality, the more solid it appears. You can could, you could move your hand so fast up and down, okay? it appears to be a solid brick, but it's actually moving up and down really fast. It's just moving so fast you can't see it moving. So physical reality is having a thought, okay? A thought about bacon or thought about driving a car, a thought, and then repeating that thought so many times it appears as though it's a solid object in your vision. Okay, it's just it's just repeating so many times it appears as a solid object in your vision. But so likewise, if you were to have a thought only once, a thought only once, there'd be no so, there'd be no solid reality because there'd be nothing to repeat itself. There'd be no there'd be no extension of an idea or an image to even talk about. So physical reality is basically repetition. It's, it's basically taking an idea and, re and, and repeating it so fast and so many times it appears to be a solid object within your mind. The issue with that is that we, is our mind is doing that with everything we're looking at. It's looking at trees and saying, and then it's, it's, it's repeating stories and images of trees in our mind over and over again. Okay? So it's like, it's like taking, a record that's spinning and putting it on a, getting it skipped, is skipping on a two second loop. It's like, hey baby, hey baby, hey baby, hey, over and over again. That thought, after a while, becomes solid because this is, this is, is so in our face all day long, it just, it just overtakes everything. So if I have a belief that's, that, is, that is repeating itself a thousand times per day in my mind, it's, it is distracting me from seeing other things or from thinking about other things or from imagining other things. It's simply occupying my vision and senses all day long. Let me give you an example. This COVID-19, whatever you want to call it, 
it's unavoidable. It's occupying your attention. Everywhere you go, people mass on Facebook, YouTube, news, TV. This is unavoidable. It's just in your face. Okay? That is what your beliefs do to you. They're in your face, and there's no way to shut them off. You can't shut off this COVID-19 uh, you know, 19 information. I mean, it's just out there. It's, it, there, there. There's some signal pushing it. Okay, and you can't turn it off. Just like with your own beliefs, you there's some signal pushing the belief into your mind, and you can't turn it off. So the belief is is that this is a phone. Okay, this is a phone. But is it a phone? That's the question. Is anything what you say it is? Is anything? Because we all know that for ourselves, that the beliefs we have about ourselves. We know there's more to ourselves than that. We, we know there's more to ourselves than what we believe about ourselves. That's just obvious. That's not even debatable. And we know there's more to everything else than what we believe about it. So this is, you know, a little black thing, whatever. This is a cell phone. But is there more to that than that word? Like, is, is anything a word? If I call you a goofball, you're a goofball. Is there more to you than that word? Clearly. So if I call this a cell phone, is there more to this than that word, than those two words, cell phone? Or is there a whole universe of things happening here that I'm not noticing, right? So if we know there's more to ourselves than what we believe about ourselves, if we know that, why are we believing anything at all? Because whatever we believe is going to be limited, and we know that. So to believe something about ourselves is to say, I'm not interested in the depth in, 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 in what's behind that name. You know, this is Renee, and that's all I am. I'm Renee. Well, hey, Renee, is there anything more to you? Nope, just Renee. There's no nothing more. There's no nothing? Nope, just Renee. That'd be ridiculous. So to, to label anything and to think that is the word or that is the label is, is beyond absurd. It's ridiculous. You know, there's a whole infinite experience here. Infinite. There's no... Can you count how many experiences you've had? One? 10,000? 492,000? There's, there's infinite experiences. There's no way to count. So, if we are infinite experience, how could you describe infinite experience? Can you describe infinite experience? Can you make, have any explanation or any description? Hell no. Where are you going to begin? Oh, I, I smell some awesome mint, fresh mint in the air. Oh, 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 oh. Where, where are you going to start to begin? Where are you going to, how are you going to begin to start to describe reality? It's just too infinite. So any attempt to describe reality is the creation of that limitation. So before you describe reality, before you have any meaning, belief, assumption, before you apply any sort of narrative, reality is infinite. Just like how children see it. Children see reality as literally unlimited. They're like, whoa, oh my God, look at this. That's how they see it. So that's because they don't have a memory. They don't have beliefs, labels, descriptions. They have nothing, no database to judge things on. It's all brand new. It's just, there's not even a thought about what's going on. They're just so amazed at what they're saying. Okay? Exactly. Repeated until created. That's how hypnosis works. You repeat the same thing over and over and over and over again until it simply just shows up because all of our energy is going to that object. More energy creates a more condensed creation okay so with all this covid stuff there the media is repeating it incessantly over and over and over again probably for the next could be for the next 10 years but the whole point is to not necessarily brainwash the people who are alive now but young people people who don't know better people the next generation they're they're going to be social distancing without even knowing why or what's going on, and have, being very un, unnatural. It's not un, we are social beings. We need social interaction. We need talking. We need comfort. We need, we need hugs. We need to comfort loved ones. 
uh, that's what we are. So for the social distancing is an, is an attempt to denature uh, humanity even further. Okay, not only that, you can't see your 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 elderly folks in the old folks home. If anyone's sick, you can't see them, can't touch them. Now, physical reality is a danger. Oh, I touched a piece of paper. Oh, my God. And then get some disinfectant injection. So it just comes, it just seeps out of my skin. So nothing, some danger out there. You know, every surface is just waiting to kill me if I touch it, right? Like, is that what's going on? The virus is floating through the air, like some invisible blob, just like invisible. Like, what? Like, it, <laughs> whatever we're imagining is not what's going on like do we, has anyone even anyone out there even study viruses or even know what they do or how they work or how they even show up or do we just hear things on the tv for the past 40 years and we just believe that yeah you, oh the virus you catch a cold you catch it oh i caught it like hey, throw a cold hey, i'm gonna throw a cold at you okay i got it they, oh, oh <laughs> cough up. i got cold now i caught it is, is is there a way to not catch a cold? Like to just the the germs just miss your mouth by a millisecond? Like, oh, just almost caught the cold, almost almost caught the flu. Oh, well, good thing I moved my mouth at this at that second. I almost almost caught it. See, the whole thing is comedic, man. We have something called an immune system. Immu Hello, anyone out there? We have an immune system that Source gave us, and it's it's a system. It works. Yeah. If it didn't work, we we wouldn't be here right now. Um, so we have to understand the power of our mind to really create feelings and drama that feel real. I mean, when you go sleep and dream at night, some of these dreams are pretty solid. They seem pretty real. And so you, you snap out of it and you're like, whoa, glad that was a, glad that was a dream or whatever. Yeah. So. Yeah. I just wanted to yeah, touch sure. base for talking about life is a dream. It and is. Okay, so here, check out this uh, quote by Ch Chuang Tzu, a Taoist philosopher who lived sometime before 250 BC. Yeah. So we're, we're saying that to be sure. acceptable anyway. Yeah. Only after the Great Awakening will we realize that this is the great dream, and yet fools think they are awake, presuming to know that they are rulers or herdsmen. How dense. Yes. So interesting. the interesting thing is, so we're talking about uh, repetitively placing thought or intention in creating a repetitive experience. Um, um, that's what we call materialization or matter. Yes. So this repetition now, so if the repetition is, oh, you hear it from news media, you hear it from people who heard the news media, mm -hmm. Then you're getting double programming, maybe triple. Then you have professionals, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, experts. Experts. Yeah. And and they know for yeah. sure because they're an expert in their field. Yeah, because someone so, taught them because, it, because, because they memorized some information. So, right. So then that solidifies the experience further. Mm -hmm. And it says that this really is real. Sure. This is something. And then you when you see people distancing by two meters mm -hmm. and and you go to the grocery store and you can only let so many people in at a time mm -hmm. and there's lines on the ground sure to distance you two meters apart then it solidifies it further it says sure. this must be real sure. it's like it's gotta be real. and then you see people walking around with masks yeah and then they give you a funny face like this if you're less than yeah two meters apart yeah. they look at you and give you a double take and kind of yeah and then they say <laughs> Did you see that? That person's yeah. like less than two meters away from yeah, you. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, that reinforces more fear programming. So, yeah, when we can interpret this mm -hmm. as a dream and that we can change the dream by dreaming change, mm -hmm. right? We see that it's not actually solid and we're actually making this up. Yes. It's a story. Yes. Okay. Then we can change the storyline and... I always think of it this way. So just imagine you're you're a movie producer, mm -hmm. okay? And you're into manufacturing movies. Mm -hmm. And you're like, man, I'm the star of my own movie. And I cast the characters who shows up into my movie. Mm -hmm. I can change the script at any time. I yeah. can I can make this a limiting prescription kind of movie yeah. where I am, say, 
um, experiencing things as a victim, right? Mm -hmm. Playing the victim card. Oh, this is happening to me, blah, blah, blah. Or I can be the victor and realize, hey, I'm infinite everything and I'm actually creating this and I can change this script at any time and create a better movie for myself. Yeah. And I can cast characters who are very helpful. Sure. Such as Power of Soul here. And we can really change life. And this is what Chuang Tzu, this philosopher, was talking about. Uh, The Great Awakening, he realizes that, hey, you're not a herdsman and you're not a ruler. You're just pretending that you are. And that's that's what's dense. Because when a person is putting all their attention into something that's false and believing that falsehood is truth, that's dense. Yeah, and we all know when we're lying. And every single being knows when they're lying because when we're lied to and we find out, we get pissed. We get upset. No one likes to be lied to. So we all have a built-in, I guess, a built-in lie detector. And that is that we, we have that because we all know when we're lied to, it doesn't feel good. So we know that no matter the worst criminal doesn't doesn't want to be lied to right all liars want to be the only person on earth who's allowed to lie because they themselves don't want to be lied to so they want to be the only one allowed to lie and the reason why a lie wants to lie is because the lie recognizes that truth has power truth has power so lie is like whoa look at that power over there i want some of that but how do i get it Well, uh, I'll just copy. I'll just mimic the truth. I'll just pretend I'm the truth. I'll just pretend I'm real. So then the false, which has no energy, no power, no intelligence, has nothing. It's like a, a, a mirage. A mirage that only comes to life when you look in its direction. As soon as you turn away, it goes away. Okay? So whenever I look away from truth, think this is truth. Whenever I look away from truth, a lie shows up. And the moment I look away from the lie, it go, it literally, the molecules disassemble and it goes away into nothing. And the truth is there again. So something has to fill the void. Whenever we look away from truth, something's got to fill the void. Then the opposite of truth shows up. Something untruthful. Ah! And if that, if that untruthfulness is something that is appealing to you, then you may be more inclined to be deceptive in the way that you get your energy. So I don't think there's anything such thing as in negative people or evil people per se. So some people haven't figured out within themselves how to generate or recognize their own natural infinite energy. They, They simply are unaware that they themselves are an infinite source of energy. So because they're unable to recognize that, they think they have no energy or they actually are so focused on the past or the future that they're, they're, they're never really here, present, so they have no energy. So because someone has no energy, they feel really low, they feel sick, they feel like they want to die, they just, they're so bad, they just feel like hell. So anything to get out of hell, they'll kill, they'll rape, they'll steal, They'll deceive, and everyone has different, you know, uh, boundaries. Some have no boundaries, but the whole point is that it's all about energy. Some people here, or some souls, whatever, are are super high, bright energy, high electricity, and souls that are dark or on the negative end of parasites, they they see, they see, they well, look at that person, look at that girl, look at that guy, look at their charisma, look at their energy, look at the way people love them, like them. They they look like their life is great. They look like they're having fun. I want that. I want that. And some of them, you know, some people you'll date, you know, appear to be someone who's resonating with you, but you may find out later on that they they recognize your energy or whatever and they were just trying to get some of it. It could be a family member. It could be one of your friends who, who you've been friends for 20, 30 years. And then suddenly one day they just snap and um, they view you at, they start to view you as an energy source and start to manipulate you or whatever. It's just about energy, okay? And so when we vote 
for governments or elect certain leaders or whatever, what we're doing is we're taking our life force energy and we're breaking off a piece of it and saying, here, you manage this for me. You manage this for me, okay? So we're letting someone or some other being or whatever to manage our own energy for us, to manage our own consciousness, to manage our own life for us, right? So why else would I vote for someone I don't know and never met? They'll never meet me. Why else would I vote and give someone I don't know who's on TV, who's wearing a suit or tie or dress, you know, blazer, why would I give them the power to influence my life and my family's life and, you know, if I had children, my children's life? Why would I give someone on TV a little black box sitting in the corner of my room? Why would I give that image, that little tiny image, my power? When I'm never going to see that image in real life, that image is never going to see me, doesn't even know I exist. This is a little character on a, on a screen and I'm going to go and give my power, my resources, my energy, my trust, my money, my life. Most important asset. Yeah. My yeah. life yeah. into the hands of some character on TV that has a title. Oh, it's Senator this or Prime Minister that or, you know, Congressman this or that. Like, what the? Are we, are we that reckless? <laughs> We're going to just fling our, our sacred trust to some characters on TV because... The TV said so because this is a system and this is the way the system works, so you better do it the way we say you do it, and that's it. I'd rather not vote. Uh, that way I know I'm not participating in something that I know nothing about. I mean, what do you what does anyone even know about the political system? What is the government? Is there even a government? I mean, there's not a real government. If, if we actually break the word down, yeah. govern yeah. and meant. Govern means control and meant yeah. means mind. Yeah. So Absolutely. what does that mean? The government of Canada, the mind control of Canada, the limiting of your mind of Canada. It, 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 there is no government. There's no corporations either. These are just pieces of paper. Like if I was to take a piece of paper, okay, I take a piece of paper and I write down, I hereby certify this charter of whatever uh, XYZ company and I stamp approval and boom, boom, boom. Okay. So that's a company? But that's all it is. It's just a piece of paper with some words on it. So that's a company right there. That's This is what Canada is. This is what the United States is or Taiwan or Japan or China. It's a piece of paper saying, I hereby incorporate China on this day and this, this and that. And I sign this and I approve it. Boom. That's it. So I a uh, piece of paper. Uh, here's China. Well, China's attacking the U.S. Okay, so China is attacking the U.S. So two pieces of paper are attacking each other? Give me a break. There is, it's a joke, man. There's no companies. There's no corporations. There's no governments. It's just a piece of paper saying things and us agreeing to it. Think about it. Or some of us don't even agree to it. Some of us don't even we, agree to it. We don't even, there's yeah. a lot of us that don't. We even don't agree. even agree to it. And, no. then, and then they say, well, oh, I have a piece of paper here that says you have to agree to it. If you don't agree to it, then I'll put you in jail because the paper said so. The paper said, the paper is more powerful than you. A paper is ink, ink and tree wood is more powerful than you. That's what the message is. Think about it. How the hell can it, words written, typed, printed, I don't give a shit how it gets on the paper. How the, can words on paper give you rights? How can words on paper take away your rights? How can words on paper have more power than you? It's absurd. Absolutely mind-boggling absurd that we even acknowledge the validity of these pieces of paper okay called uh, incorporations or legal fictions or whatever you want to call it it's all pretend pretend not real okay can we talk a little bit yes. about the opposition and why the opposition is actually important and essential yes. for the evolution of consciousness yes and so the duality, the contrast, the opposition has a role in the movie. Yes. So i just like to say, not to discredit uh, the opposition, uh, but say, hey, good job. Thanks for giving me this opportunity to experience limitation yes. and allow me to evolve beyond it because that's a useful tool. Yes. So can we just talk a little bit yeah. about why the contrast is very important and actually helpful. Yeah, it's actually it's part of life, right? Just like there's a, there's, there's a four cycles of life. There's birth, 
growth, decay, and death. Okay, four cycles of life. With that four cycles of life, there's one of those cycles, one of those cycles that humanity is trying to escape, trying to trying to escape in nature itself. Birth, growth, decay, death. Death, that one right there, humanity's lost their mind. They literally are losing their minds over one of the cycles of nature that is always happening and always going to happen. It's just simply unavoidable. It's called death. But it's not It's not the end of you or anyone. I, not even remotely. It's not even. So that being said, with a lot of light workers or a lot of people in the New Age or people involved in truth or religious people, spiritual, there's some opposition that they don't want to have evilness or darkness uh, to exist. They're like, no, like it's all about love and light and darkness and evil is wrong and has no place here and it's the devil's work and it's got to go and it's all about love and light and that's all there's to it. Well, that's a very misguided uh, perception because oneness, if you want to call it that, or enlightenment or unity or Advaita is... Oneness is everything. It's not, oh, it's it's only these frequencies here and not those ones over there. It's everything. It's all inclusive. Okay? That means if I'm an artist and I have a palette, I have a blank canvas, and I have a palette of colors here, what if I was only allowed to use one color for all my paintings forever? Not really. Could you even make it? Like, what would you draw? Just like shit, blobs of green? Just blob? Oh, I like that blob there. <laughs> like, there'd be no, you need variety. You need some sort of contrast. You need something to say, hey, there's, there's not just white. There's actually black and, oh, there's green. Oh, blue. Oh, okay. There's, there's something to work with here, right? Like if I was the, if I was a writer and I was to only have one, so I don't know if any of you guys know, but there's 12 main archetypes in storytelling. Okay, just like there's the wounded child, there's the there's the mother, there's the warrior, the the hero, you know, there's the evil guy, you know. There's all these different characters. So imagine having a story with only evil guys, no good guys, no neutral. Is this a bunch of evil people for next 12,000 years doing things? They There'd be no, there'd be no drama. There'd be no opposition. There's, there's got to be energy. There's got to be something to create friction or energy, right? So much like a battery, uh, if you don't know how a battery operates, you have a, a positively charged metal on one side of the battery and a negatively charged metal on the other side of the battery. And there's like a little, um, yeah, there we go. In between the battery, there's a little sort of a, a gate that's holding back the positive electrons and the negative electrons. These negative electrons and positive electrons, they want to merge. They want to become one. So there's a little gate in here sort of holding it, each other back. But when you plug this into a device and turn it on, the gate releases, and these electrons from the, from the positive and electrons from the negative, they rush towards each other, and they just they sort of merge, and they create like an, an orgasm or like a big bang sort of thing. And a a, a, energy is released, eh? this chi. Yeah. So that's life force. Too. That's life force. So the ma battery manufacturers have found a way to capture life force. They literally captured life force, like a, like raw God force into these things and are using them, you know, at will. So that being said, everything is one. So we have a, a an artist who has the black and white paint and green and purple and blue. And, and they're able to create the full spectrum of color. So much like that, life, God, or source, or whatever you want to call this, creates from the same palette. It says extreme negative, boom. Extreme positive, boom. Put them together, boom. Now let's see what possibilities come out of that. There's extreme negative, extreme positive, and everything in between. And, it, and you can take any molecule of, of any part and mix that together and create a whole new universe, infinitely in every direction. So it literally just infinite universes exploding in every direction because we have negative and positive. We have, we have the full spectrum to allow any experience to happen. 
I mean, imagine re- you know being a writer and only being allowed only a being allowed to use one character. You you can't build a story with one character. You need a variety. So in order to understand what warmth and love is, we have to experience pain and isolation and suffering. We got to have some sort of uh, comparableness, if you want to call it that, some sort of uh, variety of experience. And some of these, some of the variety um, is seemingly painful. It's suffering, sensations, feelings that are uncomfortable arise. But they're not permanent. And the only way they would ever stay longer than they normally would is if we hold on to them. You know, we, 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 we attach to certain stories or ideas. So for example, if I hypothetically was to attach the story that I'm a, you know, I'm a black guy, uh, some people will say, hey, you nigger. And if I was attached to the story that I'm a black guy or a nigger, if I was to personally identify with, with that story, all someone would have to do is walk up to me and then say that, nigger. And I'd be triggered. Why you wanna say that? So, whatever energy that you give to your thoughts or ideas is is what is going to set you off. Okay, if I don't care, someone says that, then whatever, I go on my way, it's nothing, I don't care. The the other person's like, why didn't they react? Oh, that's weird. They they tried to try to get a reaction. So, if we listen to these stories we hear in the media about this or about that, and we we just don't give energy to it. We just don't. Hey everybody, Um, thanks for staying tuned. Everything kind of shut down on our end here, so uh, we had some difficulties to, or some opportunities to get back on. Yeah, just technical issues, so. Yeah. uh, Challenges are resolved, we're back online here, everything's good. So thanks for staying tuned. And uh, so we're basically talking about how to avoid putting energy into limitation. And that's a very smart thing to do is to focus on autonomy and focus on being unlimited and what are we creating in this unlimited 100% brand new moment of now? That's a really good question to ask ourselves, Mm -hmm. right? What kind of energy and information have I been uh, creating? Absolutely. So uh, here I just would like to share this. So, Everything uh, kind of shut down on our end here. Mm-hmm. So uh, we had some difficulties to, or some opportunities to. Just get back. We got some issues still. Uh, just technical issues. So yeah. Uh, there we go. We're kind of having some fun times here, but it's all good. It's all part of this. Uh, experience all right he said she said we have an insane echo now because your video was still okay i see okay all right let's Let's see if that that one that's it so we get out of youtube i think we're just going to shut that down all right everybody we're still live here is the voice a little better now uh hedda Is, it, is anyone tell, can anyone tell us if we have a crazy echo now, or is it a little better now? Just comment in the side here. Let us know. If you want to. Yeah. Okay. So. Mics are good. How's the sound check there, everybody watching? Can you just leave a comment? Anyone type anything to let us know the sound is okay at all? Yes? No? I guess. I guess uh, that's it.
Okay, well, let's start off with uh, no one's responding. So, uh, we're going to start off with uh, the importance of where you place your attention. Uh, your. Still bad. Fine for Tammy. Yeah, I guess. Uh, oh, it's all good. Yeah. All right. Might want to reboot uh, Hedda or restart your connection, perhaps. Or refresh the page. Okay, here we're all good. Yeah. So, where I left off before, about five minutes ago, when uh, our software crashed, there is uh, the importance of where you place your air, your attention, your energy. So we are alive. We are life force. We are we are source itself. Okay, and that source itself can focus its attention anywhere it wants. You have infinite imagination, other worlds, other universes, uh, inside objects, you know, like when you're on your cell phone, you say, oh, I'm just on my cell phone. However, there's no limit to what's happening in each moment. For example, there's no limit to you um, sticking your consciousness inside of this and experiencing what it's life, what life is like from the perspective of this right here itself. So your consciousness can snap into any shape it wants to. Uh, into a worm, a jar of jelly beans on your desk, uh, you know, a car, a skyscraper, uh, a million people all at once, the whole universe all at once. There's, there's no limit. There's no size, shape. There's no like, oh, there's multiple people. So I can only jump into one body. No, you can jump into like a thousand bodies at once. There's simply no limit to anything ever, at any time, ever, anywhere. There's no limit to anything ever, anywhere. We've been taught a world of limitation. We've been taught that there are limits to what you can do, to what you can say, to what, what's possible, to what reality can do. There's no limit. There's literally nothing. There's simply infinite potential happening here. And a whole bunch of people... Uh, are telling you what's pop, what can and cannot be done, and you're either agreeing with them or you're disagreeing. Okay, it just so happens that uh, a whole bunch of beings who were highly focused on limitation, on materialistic repetition, a whole group of these beings decided somehow to get control over uh, what you call mainstream media and saturate that for over a hundred years of their own agenda which is based on separation on materialism and um, this contrast hey, this this hard solidness that's contrasting this spiritual nothingness okay so this this opposition if you want to call it or these powers that be that people say are negative or the Illuminati or whatever this is actually source or God itself acting as the Illuminati, acting as the evil people, acting as the serial killers or the Bill Gates or the this or the that or whatever. So source can teach itself or other aspects of itself, which would be people who are more focused on truth, focus, show us what we're not. Okay, so in, it's difficult to see what we are. Because we're already it. So we need to look at what we're not. To say, ah, that's not what I am. So by not by knowing what I'm not, now I know what I am. So the average person out there is thinking, hey, I'm going to ascend or and become enlightened or open my kundalini or third eye because I, because I realized uh, what I am. That's not necessarily the case, and that may not ever be the case. It's usually finding out what you're not. Then you'll know instantaneously what you are. Okay? So it's not a process of gaining information to become enlightened or uh, gaining some skill to become enlightened or awaken your third eye. It's the removal of illusions, of beliefs, of illogical stories that reveals what you truly are. The removal of what you're not reveals what you are. 
So think of the removal of what you're not as, think of this as a belief, okay? Gripping, having a, a, a tight fist on an object, on, on a belief. The moment I open my hand, boom, the belief drops away. So all beliefs and opinions and conclusions about reality are held onto, like they're held onto. The moment we drop, we open our hand, the belief, the opinions, the judgments, they just go away. It's like that monkey trap. There's this monkey trap, mm -hmm. it's a box and it's connected to a string and that string's connected to the tree. Mm -hmm. And there's a piece of fruit mm -hmm. And there's a hole that's round enough just for the monkey to stick his hand through the hole. But once the monkey grabs the fruit, like that banana, mm -hmm. then the hand's gripped on that. It can't pull it out mm. of the doorway. Yes. And so it's trapped because it's holding, it's holding. on to that. Yes. That's the monkey trap. Yeah. So the only way to get out of the monkey trap is to let go of the belief. So let go of the banana and then you can pull your hand out. Yes, yes. That's the monkey trap. Yeah. I, I, you know, very similar. I saw something on America's Funniest Home Videos where it had this dog, this little dog with this giant stick that was very long, and he tried to run into the house, but the stick was was too long, so the dog couldn't get to the door because the stick was holding him from going back to the door. And it sat there for like five minutes trying to get to the door, but couldn't get through until the little daughter came and pulled the stick out of the dog's mouth, and the dog ran in the house. The dog didn't under didn't understand, had to let go of the stick, stick in order to get in the to house. To get through there. Right. So in order for us to, to get into our imagination fully so we can literally actualize our imagination. Imagine not just having imagination or some vague cartoon imagination in your, above your head, but your whole reality becomes full-blown imagination. Like the whole reality, like your hand is, you're, less, you're like, whoa, turn my hand into, you know, you know, uh, a sledgehammer, and literally the hand goes, turn to a sledgehammer, like, boom, like, like full-blown imagination manifesting right here, right now, boom, in front of you. That is how we all lived when we were children. All of us were instantly manifesting our reality, but we didn't know that's what we were doing. We didn't know that we can get this little dollhouse made of plastic, you know, or a little cooking set or Tonka Boys or G.I. Joe's and sit there and play with these little characters for six, eight hours and be entertained because our imagination was creating the imagery, like worlds, other other worlds right there, right? Like when you're a little kid and you go uh, have a play fort in your living room, right? You get these couches and pillows and in the, when you're in there, you're like, whoa, I'm like in some cool thing, right? So our imagination is telling us or visualizing what it's experiencing in each moment. And if there's no limits to your imagination, then your whole reality appears to be unlimited. Exactly. Only when a belief comes in to the picture does the belief put limitations on the imagination. The belief says a human being can only jump maximum four feet high. A human being cannot jump over a skyscraper. A human being cannot karate chops through a piece of steel. A human being cannot teleport from uh, Los Angeles to New York. So we say, oh, I'm a human being, so I, I, I guess I can't do those things. What about Wim Hof swimming in uh, the ice-cold water? Mm -hmm. That's exactly. Yep. So if a person doesn't accept, it's possible. If they say, oh, I, it's impossible, you can't climb Mount Everest in your underwear. That's impossible. Yeah. So, but Wim Hof says, actually... It's possible. Yeah, it's awesome. So <laughs> the beliefs take your imagination and they say, hey, imagination, you're no longer unlimited. You're no, there, there's no longer unlimited possibilities. There's only limited possibilities. There's only limited possibilities now. And these are limited possibilities. Whatever the belief tells you are the possibilities, that's what you will accept. Unless you just say, screw it to all beliefs, then there's no, po there's no limits anywhere ever. And that's where children are. That's why it's so happy. Children are so happy, and that's why it's so amazing and beautiful for, for, for children. It's just no boredom. There's just absolute infinity going on uh, in every direction. So what happens is the physical reality, the solidness, um, when there's a transition um, between the world of separation, the solid physical reality, and that unity state, if you want to call it, 
the, the air, what we call the air, the, this invisibleness, this translucentness, starts to fill up with color and shapes. Like the air itself becomes very um, geometrical and beautiful, like beautiful colors and shading. And like, like the air becomes the energy or the energy is now revealed, so to speak. And as a beautiful light uh, encapsulates everything. So, whereas before we couldn't see the light, we just saw the physical object, but now there's this beautiful infinity light moving through everything. And, and although all that separation, like between one object and another, seems to disappear, everything seems to blend into one another. And that's the way it, it always is. It's not like it's that's some gift that we're given to be living in unity, that's that's normal, that's default. Default is heaven, default is unity consciousness, default is God consciousness, that's is normal, that's regular. Irregular is this human state of consciousness. So this is not something we need to, again, earn. I've been good God, I've been good God, please give me unity consciousness, I've been, I haven't lied, I've been nice to people, I hold doors open when they go to the bank, I hold the door open for them, I please, you don't, you don't have to ask for it, beg for it. You don't have to earn it. It's That's their normal state is enlightenment, the unity consciousness, God consciousness, Advaita. Mm -hmm. So don't try and make it out to be some huge mountain you need to climb to get enlightened or whatever. It's, it's already, you're already enlightened. Right now, your awakeness, this awakeness, you being awake. Okay, I'm awake. That is is you. The awakeness is you. Not the body you see in front of you. Not the body. Not the hair. Not the eyes. Not the mouth. Not the body. Not your house. Not the car. Your awakeness is what you are. That is awakeness. You're already awake. You've just been focusing on unawakeness. You're awake. You're enlightened. You've just been focusing on unawakeness and unenlightenment. You've been told stories, lies about what you are, and we believe them. Now that we let someone tell us what we are, and we believe it, now we let someone tell us what to do as well. So we let someone tell us who we are, and now we're letting someone tell us what to do. So we need to really figure things out on our own and really observe. Okay, no matter what has happened in my life, I'm always here watching. I've watched this body go from a little tiny body to a bigger body, bigger body, bigger body, bigger body. I watched hair grow when I was not. I watched, you know, uh, hair go from one color to another. I watched muscles grow. The, the physical reality is always changing and morphing. No matter what, there's always the physical reality is always changing and morphing. Every millisecond, something new is happening, changing. But we, our awakeness, our awareness, it's not changing. It's sitting there watching everything happen. It's watching Renee talk. It's watching Renee think. It's watching Renee smell. It's watching Renee theorize. It's watching this awareness is watching Renee. But it's not just watching only Renee. It's watching everything. It's, it's I'm an invisible watcher <laughs> watching reality, man. And I'm not limited to this body here. That's the thing is, most of us, when we think we are the body, our, our, our vision, our hearing, taste, touch, sound, thoughts, are all locked to the body sort of form. But we can unlock that so your senses become unlimited again. So when you were a child, your senses were unlimited, Vic. You were Smelling, taste, touch, smell, hear, everything was unlimited. You, you, you could literally see things in other worlds and dimensions. You can literally taste things in other other worlds and dimensions. You can hear things, smell things from other worlds and dimensions when, you, when you're a child. Mm -hmm. Because there's no limit to your senses. If there's no limit to your imagination, there's no limit to your senses. Your, your senses is your imagination. In fact, you don't even have a nervous system. No one has a nervous system. There is no such thing as a nervous system. There is imagination that your 
consciousness reacts to in every moment in real time. If I have a memory of being bullied as a, as a teenager and it really bothered me back then, hypothetically, and I just remember that, I just recall that imagery right now, I'm going to start to suffer. My mind cannot tell the difference between something that happened 20 years ago, right now, Something or something I'm dreaming up, some sort of fantasy I'm dreaming in the future. It thinks they're all happening right now. If I'm imagining trauma I had when I was 14 years old, right now, in this exact moment, my mind is going to think I'm under attack right now. And in this moment, sitting in a chair, being totally, you know, free from any sort of uh, interruption, my mind can can create a story that I'm under attack. You say, oh my God, you're, you're getting beat up again, or someone is bugging you. And our mind can just go back to 30 years late, earlier and say, oh my God, I don't like those feelings. But too late, the body has already started to operate under fight, uh, flight or freeze. Mm -hmm. And all the nerves, the blood, the brain cell, everything is shifted in the body to now combat this threat that's not even there you're just imagining it yeah can i can i share a little bit go ahead so it's interesting with with the acupuncture it's called uh, sensory motor amnesia so what happens is say there is um some kind of a trauma say a fall some kind of an accident mm -hmm. and then the body actually to prevent further damage it's a self uh, preservation mechanism that the body locks itself in its subluxates, meaning it holds that position and it doesn't, it basically prevents movement because it says, if you move, you're going to damage yourself more. Mm. It's like a cast. It's yes. like putting a cast on an arm or something, right? Sure. Or that part of the body that's injured. It says, don't move this. But six months could go. Yeah. And, it, and the brain is still saying, don't move this, yes, don't yes. move this. Yes. And it's stuck in its yeah, stagnation. So the interesting thing about uh, meditation or acupuncture or even working with herbal medicine is it's a way to undo that old continuous program like sure. the scratched record that keeps on saying, hold this position, don't move. This is a recording. Mm -hmm stimulating the body, stimulating the, ner the nervous system, stimulating the brain to say, oh, let's remove that record. We don't like that one. And let's put on the record of you have full range of motion, you have no pain, you have full blood flow, you have full functionality. Sure. That's actually the technology. I call things like acupuncture, qigong, tai chi, meditation. These are types of technologies that are very old sure. and they've been around forever mm -hmm. so one of the jokes is you know people say this is alternative medicine what how could it be alternative yeah. it's been around for over five thousand yeah. years that's not alternative. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. it's like it's mainstream boring. medicine yeah and you go to the <laughs> hospitals they got like moxibustion they've got twainet therapy they've got all the herbal therapies we're talking about China. These hospitals have over 500 hospitals with moxibustion. Chinese Re hospitals, you're saying? Yeah, Chinese okay. hospital. So it's all integrative medicine, acupuncture is in the hospital. There, instead of uh, calling it chiropractic, it's called Twaina, mm -hmm. which is a type of a therapy that unsubluxates the body mm -hmm. and also works on, you know, massage, but also. Sure releasing the fashion sure. all of this right so it's like a whole holistic approach yeah so and you can do this with meditation too like deep meditation you can un unsubluxate yourself you can go into deep states of rest of rested wakefulness it's almost like hibernation yeah so say you use like a thought it's, sound it's, it's called deep rest deep rest deep yeah depressed well, <laughs> I know I'm speaking, but it is. We can go into, let's call, call it hibernation. Yeah, yeah. And like samadhi. Yes. And and so what you do is like you could focus on a thought sound like I, right? Yeah. And you don't have to say it out loud. You could, This could be a gentle thought in your mind. And then there's popcorn thoughts going on. Oh, you got to, you, you know, you have to uh, lock your door or somebody's going to come in because yeah. COVID-19 is going to come in your door if you yeah. don't lock it. Okay. And then you say, I, because that was a popcorn thought. And then you say, well, you better grab your COVID-19 mask. I, yeah. right? More popcorn thoughts. 
So you continue to go into deeper states of relaxation and you decrease the amount of oxygen. So, but what's the, but rather than go through all the steps, what's the goal? The goal here is to have the body release the subluxation through relaxation. So, so to, to release the grip, to release the arrested development. Yeah, just like we're talking about the to monk, move forward. Monk, monkey yeah. hanging on to the banana, that was the stagnation being stuck. Sure. So you can do deep meditation to release a subluxation or to release some kind of a limited thought form or some of a limited experience that you can be unstuck and move forward. Sure, That's basically sure, it. yeah. So and, the ability, basically the ability to unfocus from something. Right. right, that's right. Because if we're stuck focusing on something, then you, you can't unfocus until you unfocus. You actually, cannot see anything else until you, fo until you unfocus from that. Actually, here, here's another way. I just This just came through the body brain. Mm -hmm. um, forgiveness. So deep meditation allows forgiving oneself for past actions. And so there's no self-judgment anymore. So what it does is it allows one to flow again. When one says, I forgive myself and I forgive everyone, I'm setting myself free. So I no longer have to think about the past of entrapment and I release myself from sure. the past. Sure. So the, the not forgiving keeps one's mind focused on the idea of the past, which never changes, doesn't, doesn't evolve, doesn't expand, doesn't, uh, doesn't do anything. So in order to move forward or have newness, you need to forgive. You need to let go. Whether you call it forgiveness or whatever you call it, one needs to let go of any attachment to the past that keeps on repeating. Just like habits, right? You're smoking or whatever you're doing. It's just the same thing repeating Oregon. The only way to get something new in there is to add imagination, to add something that's, that's totally spontaneous. What was that Einstein quote? Imagination uh, is... Uh, Intelligence is imagination having fun. Intelligence right. is imagination, or the uh, uh, intelligence will only get you from uh, A, to, A to B, and then the imagination will get you everywhere else. Because I'm at, because um, our imagination is limitless. So there's it's simply the alternate navigation tool. Like if our beliefs are limited, which they are. And I got imagination in the other hand, beliefs here, imagination here. Um, this is limited, this is unlimited. Which tool would I prefer to use to navigate reality? Something that gives me a limited perspective of reality or something that allows me to have unlimited viewpoints? Clearly imagination allows you to see each moment from unlimited viewpoints. But if I look at this moment with a belief, this is one viewpoint. So it's either one viewpoint with my beliefs or unlimited viewpoints with my imagination. Which tool do you think could solve more problems in each moment? My beliefs that can see things in one way or my imagination that can see things in unlimited ways? There's, obviously your imagination can solve any problem because it has no limits to what it can perceive. So. All problems, I think I mentioned this to you before. Yeah, and the all, imagination is actually imagining the problems in the yeah, first exactly. place. Yeah, exactly. So all, all problems <laughs> start with beliefs. Beliefs create problems. Beliefs create problems. Not just any problem. All problems. Beliefs create all problems because beliefs can only see life through one way. Tunnel vision. So because it can only see things the one way, when it, when it comes across something it doesn't understand, it sees a problem. It says, hey, there's, there's a problem. There's a limit. There's something blocking me. How do we let go of attachment to a parent living? Um, well, sure. And loving, having a parent that you love is an amazing experience. Okay? So, hey, I love my parents. I love everything they've done, sacrifice for me, whatever. Um, that parent, that experience is, is for you. When that experience is no longer um, 
needed by that person, by the other soul or whatever, the parent, then life will remove that parent or that person or thing or place or situation from your experience. It's just, it's not about missing experiences. It's not like, hey, I have, uh, let's just say hypothetically I'm married, you know. Let's just say I have a wife for 30 years and suddenly she passes away. So I have two options, two main options. I can say, wow, what an amazing experience for 30 years. What a blessing to have this being in my life, just sharing the, their life with me. Or I could say, oh, I feel sorry for myself in some way because I will no longer have any more future happiness with this person. So I can say, hey, I appreciate what I, what is, what happened, what is. Or I can say, oh, I'm going to miss not having that happiness. So like a portion of my happiness is now removed from me permanently. So we can look at the, the, the cup as half full or half empty. And the detachment is in realizing that life itself is a flowing river of change. Every time you breathe, New cells are coming in, out, okay? Every, cars are moving, birds are chirping, uh, winds moving, waters swishing. Like, life is moving, it's shifting, it's changing. Life itself is a shapeshifter. So, one thing I learned early on at the age around five or six years old is that nothing here is permanent. It's just everything that appears, whether it be a sound, touch, taste, any of your six senses. Nothing is permanent. So there's nothing to hold on to because change is always happening. In fact, all we know is change. Every moment is always 100% brand new. So let's just go on to this one law, uh, question right here. What are the four laws of the universe? And why are these laws important? I wouldn't say these are laws. These are just things that are, there's, they're just things to notice. These are four very easy things that to notice, and it, it's always there. It, you never have to wonder. These four things, once you just pay attention, this could be a game changer. Okay, here we go. This is just, you don't need to read a book. You don't need to, mem you don't need to memorize this. Just pay attention to what I'm saying. See if you notice this. Here we go. Number one, every moment is always... 100% brand new, okay? Always, not sometimes, always. That means there never has been a not new moment. There never has been an old moment. It's never happened. It's always been new. If, that, if every moment's always new, which it is, then how is aging possible? Where is the oldness? Where is oldness? There is no such thing as oldness. Where, when, when could that have happened? When every moment's brand new? Never could have happened. So that's number one. Every moment is brand new. And how do we know it's brand new? How do we know every moment is brand new? Because every moment is changing. That's how we know. If there is no change, like no, not even a breath, not even, if there is no change, there'd be no life. There'd be nothing to even observe life. So change is how we notice that newness is happening. It's, even just your, your breathing has changed. It's, the whole world has changed. Okay? Because every moment's new and we and changing simultaneously, we never know what's going to happen next. How could we know? It's brand new. And it's changing. So we don't even know what it's even changing into. So every moment's brand new, always changing, and we never know what's going to happen next. That means that every moment is a surprise. Every moment. And to even think that we know what's going on in any moment is delusional. How could we? It's a brand new moment and it's always changing and we never know what's gonna happen next. So how the hell can we know anything about anything when there's nothing to know? It's brand new, it's a surprise. So the whole idea that, that we think we know something is a delusion and that's the world, the mental trap, the mental world of Earth and the physical body that you that we are experiencing is a result of us thinking we know something. What does there know? Every moment's unlimited. 
our own experience is unlimited. Reality is endless in every direction. Every direction you look is endless. There's no beginning or ending. Everything's connected. All events are all connected to each other. There's no individual movement by itself. There's, everything's all connected. So if, if there's no individual movements, then everything is one giant movement. This whole earth, whole reality is one event. One movement infinitely in every direction. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to take a piece of that. We're trying to get a microscope and look at one cell and say, I know what's going on down there. I know. I, someone told me that when that cell moves, then that means this. And that's it. We just Someone just told us what something means, and we memorized it, and now we think we know something. Oh, I memorized something, so I guess I know something. I, I'm smart. I mem I'm repeating something told to me, so I'm smart because I know how to repeat something. Is that what knowledge is? Is, is knowledge repeating something and thinking you know something? Because if that's knowledge, then that's what 90% of the world is doing. They're just repeating ideas and thinking, hey, I know something. I'm smart. I, I have a grasp on reality. Well, that's the case, then why is the world screwed up? Why does no one know who they are or what's going on? If that's the case. If we know what's going on, why does no one know what's going on? <laughs> because we don't know what's going on. Duh. So, why don't we just relax like little children, have no judgments, no preconceived notions, no beliefs, no opinions, and then we can see things for, for the truth. Because there's no way ever in the history of creation... Can you obtain truth from any circumstance by having a belief already set in place, by having conditions already set in place, conclusions, opinions? It's not possible. It's not possible to see reality clearly when you have a belief about it, an opinion, judgment, conclusion already in place. Forget about it. You're, we're already in delusion land, already in la-la land. So do you think as a scientist, if you came, came across this, for the first time, and you wanted to get to know what this is, what would you do? You would observe it without judgment. You wouldn't. You wouldn't even make any conclusion. You wouldn't. You, you wouldn't even know what this is. What, why would you even try to make an assumption? If, if the whole point is to know, is to figure something out, then to have a preconceived notion already in place is defeating the purpose. You've you've already defeated getting to know what it is. So if we don't know who we are then how do we get to know ourselves? By judging ourselves? No. By having beliefs about ourselves? No. By having opinions about ourselves? No. By having conclusions about ourselves? No. You can't get to know yourself with any of those. The only way you can get to know yourself is by observing yourself without judgment, without a belief, without opinion, without a, an idea, nothing. Just, just silence. Your mind is silent watching. And the average person right now may be thinking, what? Like, how do I look at reality? Like, how do I go in the street? How do I open my refrigerator? How do I do anything without thinking? How do I just blank my mind? Easy. Pay attention to those four, first, those first uh, three or four sort of the, the, uh, observations and notice. Every moment's brand new. It's always changing, and we never know what's going to happen next. So, because of that... Every moment is a surprise. So treat every moment as though it's a surprise, as though it is, as though it's brand new. And it is brand new. The only thing that's telling you it's not brand new is some repetition in your mind telling you that it, it knows what something is. How would it know though? When it when every moment's brand new. So there's a there's a, a voice in your mind trying to trick you into not noticing the truth. The truth is that every moment's unlimited right now, right here, right now. And, and there's, there's no limits to anything. The trick is, is, your, is your mind is telling you there are limits. There's limits to your hands. There's limits to the height. Limit to this. Limit to that. Limit to what you can do. Limit to what you can think. Limit to here. Limit here. Limit. This mass limit. And that's, we've been trained to uh, see that as normal. We've been trained to the to have negative thinking and limited thinking as a normal human process, which is, again, it's, it's, a, it's a perversion of our true nature. It's a necessary perversion that we need to see the, we need to experience the contrast. We need to experience 
have the experience of limit of limitation to understand what being unlimited is. And again, it's not something that needs to be earned. It's simply just an, an understanding. Okay, mm -hmm. you really understand that it's it's not even difficult. It's just a matter of refocusing your mind away from that which is temporary, which is this world. This world's temporary, and refocusing it. Turn around inside yourself. Turn around inside yourself, and look at what's permanent. You, this awakeness, this aware, this intelligence is permanent. The body, form, shape, come and go like nothing. Don't worry, there's a trillion bodies to use. Don't even be concerned about this one. Okay? It's not even concern. It's this, the wake, this awakeness, awareness is what you are. Once you start to turn around and say, hey, I'm awakeness. What are the properties of awakeness, of aliveness, of life force? Then you'll be like, well, there's no limits to life force, no limits to awakeness, no limits to there's no limits to awakeness or life force. And that's what I am. Then your mind, your soul will start to resonate with that. Then your reality will start to turn into this a massive awakeness that's so infinite, it's you couldn't even imagine that you were a human before. You couldn't even you're like, what? I was a human before. That didn't make any sense. And it is it doesn't make sense because the experience of being a human is a dream we're having. This is a dream. This you think that you're dreaming when your eyes are closed, when you go at night and you close your eyes and you think, oh, I'm dreaming. No. You're dreaming 24-7. Whether those eyes are open or closed, you're dreaming. Reality is a dream. All of it. So it's, there's no semi-real or, or, you know, it's, it's real and unreal. It's, the dream experience is, is very vivid. Yet it's temporary, so it's so it's unreal. The only thing that's real is something permanent and eternal. Okay, only thing real is something permanent and eternal that it never changes. It's always the same. Period. It doesn't go anywhere. It's it's the foundation. So thoughts are temporary. They, right, like right now, I'm gonna I'm gonna say the word banana in like four seconds, and you'll notice right now there's there's no banana yet. It's just silent. Banana. Gone. See, it's like two seconds. One second. The word banana came and gone. It was gone. How can something temporary, like a word or an idea, be solid or real? Like, if I call you a jerk, or, hey, you're a beautiful woman, or, hey, you're a nice guy. How could that word or that sound be permanent? It, it's just one second, and it's gone. So we hear stories about the virus, or COVID, or this or that, and we say, oh, COVID's coming to get you. And, we're, and we hear it, and we're like, whoa. And then if we don't hear it again, then we'll just forget about it. We're like, oh, I just heard it once in my life, and that was it. It's gone. But if you repeat that same thing over and over again, a thousand times per day, it's going to stick in your head. It's going to imprint, right? So repetition creates reality. Why is every news station, every local station, every sports, and the whole world shut down over... Some invisible blobs they say is flying through the air trying to kill people. Yeah, I mean, trust me, there's thirty, at least thirty to forty thousand people a, d a day around the world dying of with no food in the belly. They just simply have no food or nutrients under that. 40,000 a day, and all over the world with this COVID right now, allegedly there's like oh like five hundred a day dying or something. So let's. And that's not even, we don't even know where those numbers are even coming from. So the whole point is, is that if you can get someone to direct their, if you can take someone's mind or attention and, and direct it somewhere, you can control their reality. Because you, you're like grabbing their head and like positioning, positioning it on, on just like a few little sentences or paragraphs of information. And their mind is on that 8, 10, 14, 18 hours a day on that one idea. Mm. You see? One idea. COVID, COVID, all day long. One idea. Forget about the other 10 trillion, zillion other ideas going on out there. Fishing, gliding, 
going to the worlds, feeling good, taking care of people, doing this. Forget about all that stuff. The only thing in the whole entire universe going on is COVID because that's the repetition. If you release that repetition and say, oh, once every month I'll mention COVID or once every year I'll mention it, then it would have no grip. It would have no power. It, have the, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't occupy your mind. So the only way to get something to occupy your mind is to keep on repeating it. Boom, 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 boom. So the reality is simply repetition. Because if you didn't repeat an idea more than once, there'd be no solidity. There'd be, there'd be nothing solid to talk about. There'd be no computer. There'd be, there'd be no phone. There'd be nothing to talk about because we wouldn't be repeating the same idea twice. So when you're using imagination, though, it's always new and changing and shape-shifting. So there never is anything solid anyways. It's not like children see a solid world. They don't. They see a world of, like, liquid moving light like moving like water or like moving like wind it's just light channels of the energy in different shapes moving everywhere it's just infinite so there's, there's there's no solidity in their world from their eyes from the child's eyes their seeing world is a all magical heaven but from the parent's eyes they see the child as a physical body the child doesn't even see their body they don't even see a physical body they just see light moving around and they don't even know they have a physical body until the programming snap uh, kicks in and they take on an identity. After the mother repeating to the child for three years, your name is, you know, Johnny or, you know, this is where you live. Until that child gets, that, gets an identity and thinks they're human, they're not human. They're like infinite energy. They're infinite God source flying around the universe. So children are source at its raw state like right there like you, you want to know where god is just right there <laughs> i mean even this is everything is source it's short sources is shaped as everything shaped as hair shaped as your phone shaped as your pack of gum you know shaped as your toenails it's everything is source there's nowhere that's not source there's holiness is everything everything is holy this is god like this is you might as well pray to this because it's, this is God. Like I'm not joking. Like this is not. This isn't just God in a in a lower state. Like oh, it's God, but it's just a it's a lower, dumbed down state. No, this is like full blown God. Like full blown God. Like what the Christians say is Jesus or whatever. This is it. This is it. This is it. This is it. Everything's it. It's it's this whole thing is alive. This isn't this creation is alive. It's a living creation. It's not. Oh, I got a bunch of living humans and living dogs and cats and birds and, and fish, but everything else is dead. No, it's every molecule is alive. And not just every molecule is alive, but every molecule is at its full capacity. It's at its full. Heaven is here. This is heaven at its fullest. Okay, it's not somewhere else. A lot of light workers or people, truth seekers, feel that oneness is somewhere other than this moment. It's somewhere else. It's somewhere in the future, somewhere in another dimension. No, oneness means all is one right now, not 10 minutes from now, not yesterday, now. So it's it just so happens that this oneness is infinite, just like your imagination is infinite and all one, right? It's not like there's, you have 40,000, 49,000 different imaginations. It's one one soup with all the images inside there. So it's oneness. There's oneness in your imagination. So why is it that with our eyes open, okay, we're like, oh, everything's separate. Look at all the separate things. And then when we close our eyes, we're like, oh, it's all one. It's all one in my mind. Oh, it's all separate. So reality's all one when your eyes are closed. Everything's all one. Eyes are open, oh, it's all separate. So how the hell does opening and closing those make reality separate and what? Like this, just that act creates a... <laughs> it's absurd. It so absurd. It's crazy. So we have rules for what we're allowed to see with our eyes open. We say a car cannot turn into a fish and fly through the air. That's not possible with my eyes open. But if I close my eyes, yay! Little fish fly in the air, cool, yeah. But my eyes open. No, I can't see that. That's not allowed. I'm not allowed to see my eyes open. I must be on drugs. I must be insane. 
So there's no rules. My eyes closed. I can see anything I want. I can dream anything I want. Hey, no words. I'm not arguing. I'm not even arguing with my images in my mind. They can, they can do it. It could scary. Good, whatever. I don't care. My eyes open. Now I care. That's not allowed. That's not allowed. That's scary. That's not good. You see, we've like created these weird superstitions and rules for what we're allowed to see and experience and what we're not and when we're allowed to see and when we're not. And where are we getting this stuff from? Is this absurd? So this feeling of individuality yes. is just a thought. It's a thought. It's mistakenly made this thought as the entire center of oneself. Yes, yes, 100%. So here I'd like just to talk about enlightenment. Yes. What's, what's when people say, hey man, I need to meditate to get enlightened. Yes. Do you? Do you have to meditate to get enlightened? Is enlightenment... A place, it's, a destination. It's, not, it's nothing. It's it's not even a thing. It's simply just a made up word to explain nature, to explain what is already natural. So so check out. Enlightenment is the dissolution of the I thought, those popcorn thoughts, mm -hmm. or the ego, this identification with being form, and the complete absorption into what you have always been. Overwhelming inner peace and silence, devoid of any fear, needs, or concerns, a state of complete, unshakable inner peace, joy, and love, one with source. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah. The dream is, is that there's separate people doing separate things and there's separate events happening. That's the imagine. We're, we're, we're like dreaming that there's separation happening and then we create stories to sort of uh, back that up. Yeah. Um, however, ev everything in our consciousness is an idea. It's a concept. Certain ideas we give more power to than others. Just like Hedda was saying earlier, she loves her parents. She loves her parent. She's, there's a lot of energy. There's a lot of focus and energy given to that direction. And... That is not something that um, is a negative thing to give energy to any direction. The, the question is, is when you're giving energy, what direction are you giving the energy? Are you giving it to something that is trapping you further into a limited state? Or are you focusing on unlimiting or using your energy or your awareness or yourself to dismantle what is not true. If we're not actively dismantling what is not true within our lives, then we're accept we're, then we're actively accepting what is untrue as a truth. So if we're uncertain about what we are, it's not because we have yet to discover what we are. It's because we believe lies that are keeping us focused away from what we are. So if if we're over there a lie will tell us to look over there. Look over there for yourself. So I'm looking over there for 40, 50 years. And hey, I've tried everything. I've tried yoga. I've tried kundalini. I've tried reiki. I've tried pendants. I've tried this, magic. That, I, I, nothing works. Because the beliefs are still telling you to look over there. If you're waiting for an event... The attachment or del uh, the attachment can delay or stop it. Um, I wouldn't say stop it, delay, uh, because you we already are ourselves. We already are enlightened, so we can't stop ourselves from being enlightened because we already are. But we can delay the recognition. We can delay realizing we are whole or the, or the the universe is heaven or everything is all good and this is all an illusion we can we can delay that but even the delaying is really inconsequential because there's really there's no such thing as time so i would say time would be the measurement of change it's just seeing change and saying oh i'm measuring some sort of interval between one change and another change or you could say that um, time is really just comparing two different events. Because if you, ne if you, if you never compared one moment to another, there'd be no time. There'd be, what's there to talk about? There's no, 
There's nothing to talk about. So the comparing uh, something creates sensation of time. Because, and then the comparing also is a reference back to the past, right? It's also like, it's like okay, I'm in the now, but let's go back to the past for a second. Okay, I'm going to compare, compare, compare. I'm, I'm always comparing the now to the past. That, that, that comparing creates a gap called time. Okay? Other than that, if there's no comparing, it's just always... This is always in the now. You're always moving with the now. You're always with the flow of the now. There's never a backtrack. Oh, I go back and check something out or, or compare something. There's never a backstep. And the backstep is the illusion because it's always moving forward. It's always move. It's never, reality is never in one spot. It's never just sitting there. It's always moving forward. So if we even think of not moving forward or think there's a past, we're in that we're in a, we're in an illusion because it's always moving forward. There's never a static moment, and there's never a past or a frozen moment. There's never oldness or aging. Those are ideas that are an illusion. They're ideas of the ego. The ego means false identity. That's what it means. It means false identity. It means I've identified with something false. So imagine I have a pack, a bag of Doritos here, okay, and I'm chewing on them. Chew, 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 chew. And I identify with being that bag of chips. Okay, I it's only nacho, hot nacho. I like okay, hot nacho. That's it, hot nacho Doritos. And by me being attached to that Dorito, the hot nacho Doritos, I'm not going to even be interested in trying any other flavor, let alone trying any other food. Okay, so. The more, we're inter the more we're attached to something, the more we're less interested in anything else. That's why people who are addicted, really addicted to drug, heroin, crack, or whatever, they're so focused on heroin, crack, they literally can't see anything else happening in the world. Doesn't matter what's happening, even their own hunger. They may not even notice they're even hungry. They might even notice that they bleed nose or their arm, or they have a big welt in arm. They simply are so focused, anything else is just irrelevant. And that's what happens to a belief. When I have a serious religious belief, you know, extremism or, you know, extreme veganism or extreme this or extreme that, it just blocks everything out other than that. So the person doesn't even know that they're in a, a cave. They don't even know they're locked away. They, they think that's all there is. And they're fighting to keep that it's, alive. It's like the attention is being hijacked yes. and just to that one focused tunnel vision. Yes. That's And the that's truth. that's the human dilemma. We our story, the story of ourselves has hijacked our consciousness. Our story. Renee, I grew up here, I went here, I dated this person, I went to school here, I, I worked that story, our nar our narrative has hijacked our infinite awareness, our infinite imagination, and keeps us so focused on that story of us that we literally cannot see the real us. Our, our, imagination, our imagination of us, or that storyline, is so captivating, our infinite imagination, and we say, hey, F you to my infinite imagination, this one story is, is the bomb. Why would I want to... Let, why would I want to take my attention away from this story? If this story is me. I am the story. The problem with that is your story, there's things in the story that you like. And there's a lot of things, probably 90% you don't like. So you get, so I have 10% I like and 90% I don't like. But I'm going to stick with it because the 90% I don't like is worth the 10% I do like. So that's kind of like a woman or who's in a relationship with a man and he beats the crap out of her. Four, four or five days a week, but those two days he doesn't. Oh, yeah, it makes up for those five days he does, right? So it's like, yeah, the sex I have with my husband who beats me is amazing one day a week, but I get beat up six days, but I guess the one day of good sex is worth my six days of beating. So likewise, we have all these beliefs that, that, that we like, well, we have tons that we don't. And we say, oh, the ones I do like is worth the pain of the ones I don't like. So what we can do is we can dismantle all the beliefs. 
So there's no there's no issue to begin with in any direction. There's no uh, resistance or acceptance. It's you're just blanket accept everything. That that way there's no opposition. You're just no struggle. You're you're not stressed. You're not trying to battle other people's egos or opinions. You just say whatever happens happens. I don't care what happens. I don't care if a nuclear bomb flies through the air and you know four. Uh, 4,000 frogs jump up in the midair and catch the immediator and eat it and then shit it out into a pile of pancakes. It doesn't matter what shows up. Just accept it. And once that happens, then you realize that people around you or what you thought were people around you really are just... Imagination. It's just part of your imagination. There never was anyone else. There never was there's, even this body you see here is not even here. It's simply just an idea of a body here. And the the idea of ownership is really ridiculous oh, too. That's that's the key right there. What Thomas said is the key to everything. It's it's the everything. To say that one owns the body or yeah. one owns the land or one owns the border that separates the land or whatever yeah. it is, it's, that's all made up stories. Sure. It's Totally. It's uh, the ownership of even the story. See, there's certain stories that, that we take ownership of, right? And there's certain stories that, that we don't. The, taking any ownership of any story binds you to that story. Any story. If you own that story, okay, you know, like, hey, I was walking last week and I stepped and twisted my ankle and, oh, my God. And, and for the next month, you're going around telling everyone how you rolled your ankle and your ankle and, you know, just come a conversation starter or whatever. That owning that story is the experience of the story. If I don't own a story, then it's just gone. It, it brings up this, um, there can be an ego for suffering, mm -hmm. or there can be an ego for being, like, amazing, right? Mm -hmm. So one can say, like what, what you're saying, somebody's complaining all the time, mm -hmm. they're, they're focusing on their pain, they're, they have an ego for suffering more than somebody else. And they have that identification with that story. Say, mm -hmm. oh, I'm suffering more than you, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But that's not true. It's just a story because sure. one is not the story. Yes. And the same thing can be true for the ego of, hey, look at me. Look how great I am. Mm -hmm. I'm the biggest victor in the whole universe. I'm so powerful. Look at me. Yeah. I'm going to hijack your energy when you focus on me, captivate mm -hmm. all your life force energy on me because sure. I'm better than you. Sure. And I created all this and you don't have that. And that's why I'm better than you. It's just a story. It is. Everything's a story. Like literally everything. And once you realize everything's a story and stories are just to come and go, they're dime a dozen. Um, then that's probably one of the first steps to like feeling free is just recognizing stories for what they are. They're stories. You, just, you write down a paper, you read it out, you, it's it. They're just, they, they come and go. The words come and go. That's it. They're, they're not, they're, they're not solid. The words are not solid. Okay? The words are not solid. Ideas are not solid. They're not real. And even numbers. Numbers aren't real. They're not, where's numbers? Have you ever seen a number in nature? Never. There are no numbers. There's no debt. There's no money. There's nothing. I mean, right now, if you wanted to, if you're a banker and you want to make a million dollars, well, I'll just go and I'll just type one and put six zeros and enter and there's a million dollars. Like, it's it's just numbers. There's digital symbols on a computer. It has, it has nothing to do with money or anything. It's just numbers. So there's no money. There's no, there's nothing. There's simply nothing going on here. And even with the COVID stuff, um, and this is going to be really, you know, maybe weird or strange to hear, but... Uh, I'll, if any of you want to talk further about this, but I'll just let you know there's there's nothing even happening. There's no COVID and there's no humans and there's no planet Earth actually even either. All this is a story in a, within our consciousness. In fact, the humans that you do see, they're not even human. It's actually Source or God playing the role of that of that body. So even if there were people getting COVID, it's there's no one's actually getting it. There's only God playing every, every character anyway. So no one's really dying or hurting or there's no real emergency. It just it appears that way because God is or source is actually um, source is actually creating every character. It's creating Donald Trump, it's creating you, it's creating me, it's creating everyone. So source, reality is the imagination of source. It's imagination of if you're unlimited. 
what would you do with that unlimitedness? Would you do everything? Would you just be unlimited? Would you just unlimit in every direction? Of course. And in that unlimitedness, there's unlimited light and there's unlimited dark. And you would just exp you would just expand into all of that because you're it. You're you are the one dreaming it up. So source is doing everything. It's just infinite imagination that's playing out. This is it. So we are light. Light is invisible. That's why you need a laser or smoke to see it. Because there's, there's no way to see it. It's just everywhere at once. It's, it's already everywhere at once. So light doesn't have a speed. And anyone who tells you light has a speed is nonsense. They're trying to trick you. Light has no speed. Um, so this light itself is non-judgmental. Just like there's mass murderers, there's saints, there's whatever going on on Earth, the sun is shining this, the light equally amongst everyone. It isn't, it isn't isolate good people. Okay, you get sunlight today because you're good, and you get darkness today because you're bad. It doesn't care. It's just, but I am love, I'm light. Whoever gets, who's ever here, you get it. I don't care. That's what unconditional love is. It doesn't care. It doesn't, it is love. It's not like I choose to love you, I choose to love this, I choose to love, okay, I choose to love that because I like the taste of it. No, it's just, I am love, period. There's nothing else exists other than this love. If you're experiencing something else other than love, then you must be in a dreamland because there's nothing else other than love. So God is like the same way. It's, there's only unconditional love in every direction, infinitely satisfying, it just, you know, fill you up completely in satisfaction. It's everywhere. It's happening now. It is now. Another analogy, it's like electricity. Mm -hmm. So say you've got Nikola Tesla created this uh, hydroelectric dam there in, the, in Canada, right? And so he's converting, moving water into this mechanical electricity stored in, well, batteries sure. and then generate, you know, yeah. water moving through a turbine, powering a generator, store it in a battery, and then transmitting that through power lines to everybody's homes and everything, right? Yeah. So that electricity is not good, bad, right, or wrong. It's just neutral. Mm -hmm. It's a neutral prop. Electricity is not good, bad, right, or wrong. But what about how one uses that electricity? One can use it for an electric chair mm -hmm. to zap somebody, mm -hmm. right? Or one can use that stored electricity in a battery to zap parasites with, a, say, a Don Croft zapper. Yeah. A world without parasite zapper. Uh, one can use that electricity to light a greenhouse to grow a whole bunch of plants, right? So the electricity is really a neutral prop, and that's life force. Yes, it's neutral. Life force doesn't have an agenda on yeah. its own. Yeah. So now, what are we doing with our life force? Are we allowing our life force to be hijacked? and focusing all of our life force in the narrow tunnel vision of limitation? Mm -hmm. Or are we seeing the big picture that we are the eternal self, the Tao? We're not the thoughts, we're not the feelings or the body sensations that we have thought ourselves to be. We're actually the source itself, mm -hmm. having the experience, having the dream, dreaming itself. And now we're awake because we had this conversation. So that's really awesome that we can interpret and perceive now through this different perspective and and now we actually have the choice well i'm gonna continue to go into old limitation and beliefs tunnel vision mm -hmm. or am i going to change myself in every 100 percent brand new moment of now and observe reality and create through this new beginning right absolutely and uh you know, there's a few different ways to go about making changes, and one of the ways is is recognizing that this story that you've been saying is just a story, and just change the story. Just like if you were to get a book right now, a random book from from the library, if you were to just get a, a pen, like a you know, and just start scratching out lines and adding new lines in, or erasing characters, putting new new characters in, there's no problem. It's no problem to take any book from the library and just start editing the book and tear pages out. They like just change it completely. It's, an effort, it's effortless, yeah. but when we when we have our own story in front of us, somehow it just we don't see we 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 lose the ability to edit the story. If it's any other story, no problem. Our story, 
we don't even know where to begin. We we, we, we we can't even imagine editing our own story. As though our own story is locked in stone and other stories are not. We like to cast characters in our movie, in our story, that will change our story for us. Sure, but sure, exactly. It's, it's, it's kind of exactly. funny, actually. That's interesting because, you know, even, a, even a, a, a religious perspective is where, where the character of us is in a story right now. And then in that story, someone could say, hey, if you commit sin, you can go to hell. And then in that story, I say, hey, you're right. Maybe, I, maybe, maybe your idea is right. So if I believe in this religious figure, then maybe that character can come save me in my own dream. That, so that dream character can save my dream character. Because it's not saving the real character. The real character, the real one is you, and you're not even the body. You're like behind the body. You're like this life force behind the body operating. So the body itself is just a dream that your con that your mind is having. So while I'm dreaming, if I'm dreaming, I'm a human. And then I dream I can go to hell as a human, and I believe that, then I'm gonna have it, then I'm gonna say, hey, I need something. To help me not go to hell. So then I create another belief that says, hey, this guy will come from the sky and help you not go to hell. All I have to just believe that this person is really exists and then you're saved from hell. So as long as you believe this one image is real and this one image is real, then you won't go to hell. So is, is that it? You just believe something and you don't go to hell or, you know... Why don't we take the time to actually figure out what reality is and how it works, and then we don't have to want to get saved. Then we don't have to have faith or trust in some vague idea that is undefinable, that some superhero is going to come and uh, change the world. And if a superhero doesn't come change the world, they're not going to change it for us. They're simply going to direct us personally on how to see ourselves clearly. Which delves right into the next question. Mm -hmm. So why is responsibility more beneficial than blame and judgment? So taking responsibility, say, okay, sure. I have the power to do something about this. Yeah. I'm responsible for all of the suffering that I experience. I'm also responsible for changing it now. Why is that more important than blaming others for the story or judging others for the story? Well... I think the number one reason why it's important, um, I wouldn't say it's, it's, it's important to take responsibility, but I would say it's important to not blame or judge. So it's ideally you want to keep things as neutral as possible because by placing blame or judgment, one is already under an assumption or preconceived notion or opinion that something other than the shape is responsible for the shape's feelings. And it's also under the assumption that um, this person knows how cause and effect works when they don't. So by looking at each, at each situation, our feelings, and seeing how we feel in each moment, someone says something to us, or we see something on TV or hear something that disrupts us, our feelings, and we say, oh, that I, I don't feel good. And that must have caused it. That person must have caused it. That thing, that story, that idea must have caused it. The issue with that is that now we are attempting to uh, deny that our interaction with reality is our own doing. Now we're trying to say that our we are innocent bystanders and reality is happening to me and I'm a puppet. I have no will, no say, no direction, no input, no nothing. I am just a ragdoll in the wind in a windstorm. I'm a ragdoll in a in a hurricane flying through the air. Tornado shit storm. Yeah. When when that's absurd because in every moment, we are the ones who are giving meaning to each moment. It's not, something else is not giving meaning to this moment. 
if my mind is silent right now, it's not like I'm hearing a thousand voices from around the world telling me what this moment means. No, this whole, this mind right here is generating ideas about what this moment means. So clearly, whatever we're experiencing cannot be separate from us. Even our words, even our words about other people. Hey, look at that fat guy. Oh, there's a fat bum and big fat head. Look at him. Huh? He's, he's a dummy. Look at him. Well, if I'm the one saying that, and I'm the one who came up with that idea, that idea is not separate from me because I'm the one who dreamed it up. So clearly, I can't be talking about that, that guy over there because I'm the one who just generated the idea out of nothing. Yeah, just out of nothing. I just, it, was, it wasn't even there, and then I just dreamt it up, and then I'm like, ha-ha, look at that guy. But I'm the one who's doing that. It's not him. There is no him. There's just my descriptions that I give meaning to. The question is, what descriptions are you giving reality in every moment? Are you looking at the TV and seeing uh, third world countries and saying, oh, look at those poor people and the poverty's bad. Are you looking at the COVID? Are you looking at people who are not wearing masks and saying, look, they're putting me in danger. They're not wearing a mask. They're, they're potentially killers. You, you lock down. You know, are you, are you creating anger out of ideas that you think you are all right about? You know, I'm right about Christianity, but I don't see the Pope or I don't see my pastor doing this and that and they're wrong and blah, blah. So we have all these ideas about reality and we let those ideas play with our emotions. That's wrong. That's right. That's good. That's bad. That's ugly. That's beautiful. That's horny. That's perverted. That's sexy. It, you know, we have all these words and each word we say is creating a different emotional effect upon us. So some people get lots of energy from telling the truth. They, truth is this energy generator. Some people lie. They they deceive, and they also get energy, but they're stealing it. They're not generating it from themselves, but they're all, they're getting the energy. So everyone is needs this energy. So the question is, how are you defining your reality, and what, how is it affecting our energy, our consciousness? Okay, am I saying I'm a human? I'm forty something. Oh, I got bad knees. Oh, my hips. Oh, look at the pimples. That's there. Oh. Oh I, oh, I better get married soon. I, my time's running out. Like, do you know, like, where is our energy going on? Is that our idea? Is our idea? Oh, I better not get sick. I have a weak immune system. You know me. I got, I get a cold every six months. If I get the COVID, oh, that I'm a goner. Like, you know, I, I, I ain't touching any doors or nothing. Okay, where's our mind focus? Where's our energy going? Is it, is it going on? You know, watching the sports rerun, food channel, like, meditating, understanding yourself. Netflix, like, what are you doing with your life force? What are you doing with your time? What are you, what are you creating? So we have to, just like you said, if we get caught into a, what's the word, a suck? What's the word? Hijacked into a time. Uh, no, the word uh, where you hijack the cell or whatever. Oh, subluxation. Yeah. If we get hijacked into some state where we're not moving, um... <clears throat> then nothing changes in our, in our lives. So everyone, I, I make devices and quantum interdimensional uh, products that tap into deep uh, layers of reality that allow people to really uh, amplify their, their life force. And one of the things I, manif I make is a, a uh, manifestation plate. And this plate um, really, uh, I guess, amplifies your mind um, power very dramatically now some people use that power to try and manifest money some people use it to try and gain romance or uh, you know or have a child or whatever and some people actually use this this uh this device i have to become more aware more awake uh learning how to understand uh, the 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 methods of manifestation and really get to explore infinity because there's this infinite life happening, so we're here as explorers, and that's how we were when we were uh, children, seemingly. Uh, we were exploring everything, and it was fun, it was great. Uh, only when we stopped exploring did life become boring. 
Right. In, in Taoism, it's called original nature. Mm -hmm. So there's a baby that's born. Yeah. There hasn't been any labels. There's no first, middle, or last name applied to this life. Yeah. Nature. Just born. Nature. Yeah. Right nature here. Raw. And then what happens is that baby is given, what, maybe a birth certificate number, and then a first, middle, and last name. Mm -hmm. And then there's this story that's generated, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you were born to these parents. You have this first, middle, and last name. Um, and they have so much money in their bank account. And they have these credentials behind their names. And that makes you uh, famous or not famous. And then it's part of this just building this story, right? And then when there's suffering and there is, uh, say, basically a lot of conflict, yeah. right? There's the opposition forces, limitations, restrictions, all of this. That creates this life thesis. Yes. And the life thesis is a story too. So it's like putting on colored glasses. Say the, the, the lens in the glass is red. Mm -hmm. And you put on these colored glasses and you're like, whoa, the whole universe is red. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, it's not safe. There's COVID-19. All of these are just stories. Mm -hmm. Then original nature is awaken from the dream. Come on, take off those glasses. Now, what do you see? Is is reality really red? Yeah. So original nature is coming back to that comprehension that, hey, this is a dream. And the universe source is dreaming itself. Mm -hmm. It's not limited. It's limitless. Yeah. And that's really the reason why this video is created is to share that and just let everybody remember, meaning, hey, remember yourself. Mm. Remember yourself. Yeah, just, just look, just look at, you know, the word re means new, okay? Re means new. So, um, when you have respect for someone, uh, the word spect is two words. It's re, so it's new. And spect means vision, so it's a new vision, or to see something new. So to have respect for yourself is to see yourself new in every moment. And that way you don't have any, um, you don't have any uh, memorized limitations that you're bringing into each new moment. You don't have a memory of, oh, I, I can only jump so high, I can only do this, I can... You know, there's no memory. There's no identity. Respect means to have no identity or to place no identity upon someone. Because the moment you do, now you're telling them what they are. Now you're saying you are this. Okay? You're, you're, you're not allowing nature or reality to just be. But you're interfering. You're saying you are Ray. You are a human. You are this. You are that. I am making that declaration. It can't be another way. There's no no debating. There's no open-minded. If you're open-minded about what you are, then you wouldn't even label yourself. You wouldn't even say you're human. You wouldn't even say you're, you are that name if you were really open-minded. It's like a no-name superstore. Products. Yeah, no-name. Like, yeah, you go <laughs> get these generic no-namers at uh, different grocery stores. That's That's it. There's, there's no label. No there. label. Just take the label off the can. Yeah. So this world that we are in right now, this dream world, I call label land because that's all that's going on here is just infinite labels labeling God, which is infinite, as something else. Everything we're looking at is God or source. And we're saying, no, that's not source. That's actually my hairbrush. And that's, that's some cologne. And that's some coconut water. And that's a cheeseburger over there. It's not source. It's kind of, it has nothing to do with source. And each one of those things I just mentioned has a separate origin. It, everything's all separate on every level from every direction. When that's, see, that's the illusion is that, hey, things of a different shape must have different origins. Oh, that's Sam, Samsung or Blackberry or Microsoft. Oh, this some sort of lip gloss. Oh, packet gun. These are all different sources. They're all different things, different sources wrong it's all the same source it's all your imagination you imagined what this is you imagine what this is you imagine what this is so you're the source just because you give this a different source a, i imagine this comes from you know gum factory i imagine this comes from the lip factory i imagine this comes from the cell phone factory just because you imagine it comes from different places doesn't mean it does 
And uh, just like when you're closing your eyes and dreaming, it doesn't mean those people that, that you see in their, you know, in your dream world are actually real. They're just a part of your dream world. It's a part of your own imagination. Mm -hmm. So likewise, everything here is simply your definition of it, right? It's, it's simply just a story that you apply to each moment. So what would life be without a story? Mm -hmm. Think of that. Life without a story. What would each moment be like? What would each moment of life be like without a story? It'd be like you being an artist with a blank canvas so you can paint on it. Totally blank in every moment rather than having a canvas that's already painted for you in every moment. Imagine being an artist and having all this stuff to paint but the, the, the canvases you have, they're already painted on. What would be the point? Yeah. So reality says, hey, life is brand new in every moment. And I'm going to give you a blank canvas in every moment to paint on. Because you can't paint on a, a canvas that's already painted on. So when you look at yourself with, with, with respect, you're looking at yourself as a blank canvas that you have the ability to create whatever you want on that canvas. And But whatever you create is not real. Because it's just temporary colors that you're going to put on the thing. It's This physical reality is temporary. It's not permanent. So whatever I paint with my mind, whatever images I paint in my mind or with my beliefs or whatever, it's not real. It's just a temporary image in my mind. And just because I repeat that same image in my mind over and over again doesn't make it more real. Just because I, I take an image in my mind and I, and, I, and I repeat it a thousand times today doesn't make that image any more real than if I just saw it once. It's just an image. So we take images in our mind, and then we repeat them. And then we say, that's the past. I've seen that image before. No, you never saw the image before. You just are repeating. <laughs> you just are reimagining an image, and then you're repeating that imagination over and over again. And then you're saying, hey, those other repetitions mean it existed in the past. No, it, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean repetition does not equal the past. Just because I go like this four or five times doesn't mean okay, it happened before. No, it's it's brand new. Every moment's brand new. Once we take our mind off those four, those three laws, or not laws, but truths, we get diluted. Every moment's brand new. Every moment's always changing. We never know what's going to happen next. Every moment's unlimited. There's there's no, we, we can't identify any limits to any moment. No one can. So all this talk of limitation is totally delusional on every level by every single person on planet. But the good thing is, is that there are no people on planet. There are no humans. There is only God or source playing every character. There is the appearance of a human. There, there is the appearance of what appears to be some shape and things here you call eyes and hands and feet. Whatever. It's not a body. It's just something. We don't even know what it is, but it's here. And it's experiencing this. It's no name experiencing it, itself. Yeah, it's no name. Everything's no name. Everything is infinite. So there's really nothing happening. And I mean in actuality, like in actual real reality, nothing's happening. There is there is one giant thing happening, but it's so infinite, there's no way to say what it's doing. We can't say, I'm talking on a computer, or even, even Thomas and I are talking, because... That would, be, that would be trying to isolate these two images from the rest of the world and trying to say only this is happening. But th this, these two images talking is not isolated from the rest of the world. So this talking here is not actually talking. It's actually a far greater thing that's infinite in every direction for infinity. So there's no actual particular thing happening anywhere ever because there's all of our definitions and labels are erroneous and there's no one in the bodies. We mistakenly think that there's a soul in the body, that there's a soul in here, and this soul needs to escape from here, or, um, or if the body dies, you know, then the soul has to leave and escape. No, there's not even a soul in the body. The, the bodies are being operated by remote control from a, what you'd call a distance. So us, the, the, the real beings are nowhere and everywhere we're infinite and we are 
uh, imagining these bodies and we're like operating these bodies with our minds. But our bodies don't exist anywhere in particular and our, and our soul, if you want to call that, is not inside the body. So don't worry about the body or some, you know, the body gets hit, hit, hit by a car or shot or crushed or the virus or nuclear bomb or whatever. We're not in, we're not in the body anyway, so it would have no effect upon us. Um, so it's kind of like um, you using your you using your computer at home to go on the internet. If I broke your computer, you wouldn't be harmed, would you? Hell no. Just like if I broke your body, you wouldn't be harmed. It's the same thing. With the computer, you can get up and just walk away. You can go on the internet for half an hour or four hours and get up and walk away. And you can do the same thing with the body if you realized you were not the body. That's why I said before the age of 12, I wasn't stuck in the body. I was all the universe. It was just a, the body would just showed up whenever I wanted it to show up. Otherwise, it wasn't even there. So likewise... This world doesn't even show up unless you give it energy. Unless you say, that's real. Those people are real. I am real. Everything's real. It's all real. Only when you start to realize your own story is just a made-up made story and you are the infinite consciousness floating in space and you're just imagining these stories and visualizing them. Only when you realize that your story is false or not real, then the world will start to appear to be unreal as well. And it will appear to be unreal as, as in it will appear to be more made of loving fun than this serious stuff. Mm -hmm. It, it, it starts to take on the characteristics of like a, a carnival of some sort. Uh, and it, 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 all, it just blends right in to what, you would, to what the earth was before you remember it. So we're always blending into one reality or another Billions of times per second, the billions, trillions. There's never, there's no solid in anything. The whole point, the whole problem is, is that we think that there's solidness, that we, we, we think there's things. There are no things, and we're not a thing. And the, the, all this confusion started because we, because we thought we're a thing. We're a, we're a form. We're a, a limited structure, and we're not. So. It's it's like, you know, the fish is in the ocean of consciousness. Yes. Not consciousness stuck in the fish. Yes, exactly. So, you know, spirit is everywhere. Yes. Right. Think so. So when when the form say, you know, <clears throat> the formless is everywhere, right? Yes. And then say that that electricity decides it's not going to animate that form anymore. Yes, yes. So it leaves, but it doesn't leave because it it's leave. actually everywhere. Yes, exactly. It, bang on. It doesn't so it's even like leave. Fishes in nothing water. happened, see? That's, That's what right. I mean. Nothing really happened. There's nothing went anywhere. Like there was no two things. So think of the air. Think of this is a good analogy. Think of the air yeah. as electricity, as life as God, as consciousness, as as the elect and the intelligence of the universe, the air. And this air is everywhere. It's in everything. It's just, it's just saturates everything. And inside the air, the air is alive. The air is like, you know what? I'm bored. I want to create a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of dogs and cats and animals and insects and mosquitoes. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna imagine myself into existence. And so then God or universe is just just imagines everything and just done. Okay, that's it. Done right there. It's it's in one shot. Everything just boom. So when whatever's happening in the imagination, like if you were to imagine a group of a hundred people right now, just everyone out there, just imagine a group of a hundred people standing there in a big field, just a whole bunch of people, and then the group splits in half, fifty on this side, fifty on that side, and everyone just start just start fighting, just blah blah blah, just fifty on fifty. After you finish your imagination, did anyone get hurt? No, it was all in your imagination. No one, there was no, no real person there. No one really got hurt. There was no real person there. Same thing with this world. This is God's imagination or source's imagination or your imagination. Where it doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. So no matter what happens here, 
it's there's no real person in inside the body that's being killed or hurt. Sure, there's screaming. Sure, there's blood. Sure, there's pain. Sure, there's families and sorrow. But even those are actors as well. Even God's playing those characters. So it's like virtual reality for God. This reality. The simulation. Simulation. It's, it's like virtual reality for Source. But Source is crazy. It's not... People think God is like, oh, some nice, love, gentle. Oh, I love you, gentle. Source or God is the most mind-boggling, crazy, insane being. But there's no comparing to them. There's, there's, there's not another being to even compare Source to. So everything, everything I'm saying is just ridiculous. Anyways. But that being, my relationship, my understanding of Source is, whoa. Like... Think the most demented, crazy, weird, maniacal, deranged, schizophrenic, perverted thoughts and ideas. The at the most extreme level of just absurdity and disgusting, revolting nastiness. And think of the opposite of that. The most beautiful, mind-boggling, just jaw-dropping beauty of uh, just beyond all comprehension. Yeah. All the crazy weird stuff, all the fluids coming out of bodies, all the sick stuff, rotting stuff in the universe, all the mind-blowing, magical things that are happening, that is source. It's it's everything. It simply is everything. I don't care. It's your mother, your father, your, your feces coming out of your backside, dirt, stuff in the other dimensions, other worlds, air, skyscrapers, tanks, cars, trucks, Everything is source, like everything. You're never not away from it. There's, there's nothing else. There's nowhere else to go. There's no need to even think for a second that we're away from source. There's nothing else exists other than source. Source is speaking right now. What what could make this ha this moment happen? What could produce this moment to happen other than source? There only is source. That's the word source means source. So if if you have a source, then you must come from source. And if you come from source, then you must be source because the only is source. The only is source. But this is what source is doing. Source is pretending to be humans. Source is pretending to be humans. It's pretending to be Renee. It's pretending to be Tom. Pretending to be you. That's God. Don't you don't need to go any further than a realizing you're awake to realizing that God that source this is God. There's no object. There's no two dude in the sky or chick or the divine feminine or divine masculine. Forget about any definition. Any definition you have for source is ridiculous. It's a joke and it will never be true. Even the belief in God is a joke. Because whatever you're believing about God will never be the equal, the actual source. Source is beyond a limited idea. It's it's just it's a very life force that gives birth to ideas. There's actually a Zen Kuan that says if you can say what it is, that's not that's it. not it. For sure. Same thing with yourself. Right. Same thing with anything. If you label anything anywhere, anytime other than by other than pretending, then we're deleted. Okay, we have pretend, we have imagination, and we and we can pretend and know we're pretending. It's when you think you're not pretending is when the delusion happens. The whole world is pretend. There's not one moment in existence that is not pretend. I don't care how serious you think it is. I don't care if you think you're the last person on earth and everyone's been wiped away due to some, you know, hailstorm or whatever. It's all an illusion. There, there, there simply is no real people inside of these bodies. It's all done by remote control from another dimension. So even if the bodies you know, get crushed or heads chopped or split in half or bodies squished or whatever, nothing. It'll have zero effect upon your being. Zero effect upon your life, upon anything. It'll just be like a movie. It'll be like watching it on a movie screen. It'll, it, once it crashes over... That's it. it. You're on to, to other scenery, which is, there's no end. So this is the never-ending story. This is it. It's a never-ending story. And and the stories could end um, only only temporarily, though. You know, the stories, you can reach certain states of awareness in which there's absolutely silence, dead silence. Like all the sounds of cars and trucks and 
people and TV, it's just gone. It's just absolute peace and stillness and emptiness. But yet it's so full of just um, wellness that there's not even an urge to want to be manifested into a body at that point. It's just, there's not even, like, what would be the point? So we sort of step down that source uh, consciousness to have this reality experience where we seemingly are in separate bodies. Otherwise, there'd be no point. There'd be no need to have this. In fact, source continues on regardless of what's going on here. In fact, source doesn't even know what's going on on Earth right now. Doesn't even know. Because whatever we're thinking is not accurate. So what would be the point on having an inaccurate description of what's going on anyways? There would not, there would not be an a, a need for that. So the source doesn't know what's going on here. Because what's going on here is, is not what's going on with source. Source is one. Source is at one with itself. So it doesn't have a need to... Um, I guess, uh, experience separation. Because it, there, there just never was separation. Yeah, that's all pretend. It's all pretend. So li life is like pretend. And that's what the first thing that children do when they're young and, and, and baby animals and cubs is they play. They play. The first thing is the instinct. Play, play, play. You know, hide and go seek. Hide and go seek is the, is the first act. Is the, is the, there's only one act in all creation. One act. And that act is called hide and go seek. That's it. That's the only thing that's happening. Source playing hide and go seek with itself through different shapes and images forever. That's it. It's just the only game in town, hide and go seek. And this is it. And once you once you find uh, what's there, you're no longer seeking. Hmm. So here, here uh, let's wrap it up with this. Yep. So what empowering actions can we each employ, ourselves included, in our daily life experience of life force to benefit the quality of our experience. Say if somebody is suffering, mm -hmm. somebody is going through hardship, mm -hmm. somebody is putting their energy into something that is limiting, what can we do, what actions can we take to transform that experience? If everything is energy, mm -hmm. all energy can transform from one form to another. Yeah. And because everything is energy, anything is possible. Because it's not solid. Yeah. Everything's changing. Yeah. What can we do, Renee? Well, I would say the number one thing to do would be to uh, take an interest in a, in being the observer. You just you, you just got to change uh, our attitude and recognize that it is within our ability to figure out reality. It's it's not some crazy, mysterious, you know, thing to figure out where sources or enlightenment or whatever. It's it's totally normal. It's 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 a done deal. As long as you're interested in it, it's a done deal. And really willing to um, let go of things that are not true. Okay, so here, I have an interest in um, transcending limitation. I have an interest in uh, observing how I operate or w how this operates, whatever you want to call this. Okay, so hey, I, I'm an observer. So now I'm going to abandon the idea of trying, waiting for some dude or whatever to save me from my own misery because trust me, if you're in a physical body, if you have a physical body here, you're in misery. I don't, I don't care who you are or what you look like, there's some form of misery going on by being separated from source. Period, and and no matter what, if you have a physical body, you're you're seeking a way out of it. I don't care if it's some new religion you have to make up. There's some something you're doing, whether whether it's through food, sex, drugs, religious, spiritual stuff. You're seeking a way out of this. So we need to just sit back and pay attention. Get these four principles. Write them down, post it on your computer, on your wall, on a credit card. I don't care what you got to do. Notice these four things all day long, every day. Just notice them. You don't have to do anything. You just notice. It's, it's no effort to notice something. You're already noticing things. Just pay attention more. Every moment's brand new. Every moment is always changing. We never know what's going to happen next. 
every moment is brand new, oh, sorry, every moment is a, is a surprise. It's also unlimited because we can't see any limit. limit. We can't see any limit. Every direction you look in, it goes on forever in that direction. I don't, I don't care if you get a microscope and look at your hand or the wall or a piece of dirt on the side of the street. It goes infinitely in every direction. If that's not amazing enough, I don't know what is. But even when I say that to people, they're just like, oh yeah, cool. It's like, it's irrelevant. It's like they don't even believe it's infinite. I'm saying, hey, go get a microscope. Okay, go get a microscope. Hey, zoom in, zoom in. Zoom in 10,000, 100 million, million, 10 million times. Hey, I still see things. Yeah, I know. And you're, uh, and you're still going to see things for the next 10 trillion years because it's infinite. Isn't that amazing that there's something infinite running all this? Like this is, there's no limitation. This is all infinite. Everything is infinite in every direction, everywhere. Like all this. Like all the world. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Like, oh, <laughs> OMG. What? <laughs> Who can invent something infinite? Can you invent life? Do you know how to invent life itself, invisible life force that's awake and intelligent and aware? Are you able to do that? Because let me know. Because we're it. And no one knows where this has come from or how it's happening. And that's not a miracle. You tell me that look at the level of artistry. Okay, think of what it would take to, to draw a picture of yourself. Paint a picture of, of yourself. Lifelike, like very, very photorealistic. Like a life size painting. One image. Maybe if you're a master painter, six months or a year of just ab photorealistic painting, and that's one image of yourself, one, frozen in time, a year to paint, photorealistic, photorealistic image of that. But we're the real thing. Like, it's not a photo. Like, it's, it's real, and it's, it's changing shape in every millisecond, this artwork here. And it's not just the outside, the inside changing shape too. Like imagine drawing each shape, each form, each hair, each skin molecule. Someone's doing it, something's doing it. Not in the past, right now. See, we're not born in the past and then push forward like your mind tells you. It's all coming from right now. The past does not create the future. The now creates the now. Because there is no past or future to create anything. So it's all being drawn into existence right now. What would it take to create, to draw this and inside in the bone and tendons and this and inside the eyeball, inside the brain, what would it call the lungs? And what, would it call, what would it take to draw that into existence right now in real time and invisibly draw And not just here, this and that and the computer and you and everything going on, everything. All of creation being drawn, some artist is mad drawing into existence right now, all of it. Not just drawing it into existence, but giving it intelligence, emotions, the ability to speak, reason, imagination. Uh, we're living in like a miracle beyond all comprehension, and it simply is overlooked on a moment by moment basis. We're literally living in infinity. We're, this is a, we're in a magical paradise, and everyone is just ignoring. The yeah, magic, it's, it's obvious, like, like so obvious, it's hard to not, to not see it. How can you, how can I not see that everything is all connected? That I, I've never seen a barrier, you know, between light. Has, have you ever seen light split into pieces? No, it's just, everything's made of light. Have you ever taken a moment of reality, like any moment of reality and tried to break it into pieces? Like how? How, how can I take reality and, and say, okay, that goes over there and that goes over there and this is, that, no, that's wrong. That, that shouldn't be here and this is go there and that's a cow and that's a phone and that's a piece of gun. Like, what authority do I have to even try and separate something that is inseparable called life? Life is inseparable. Life force, life, each, each newness, the newness of each moment is inseparable. I can't separate one piece of newness from another piece of newness. I can't separate... One piece of change from another piece of change. I can't separate one surprise from, from another surprise because it's all surprises. It's all brand new. So here, since there's no such thing as, you know, separation. Yeah. So what that does is, okay, man, you're me and I'm you. Mm -hmm. uh, we're each other, meaning 
well, I wouldn't need to steal from myself. You don't need a lock on your door. Neither do I, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, and there wouldn't be war mm -hmm. because why would you be in war with yourself? Yeah. You know, there's no need to fight. Why does anybody have to be in a conflict with oneself? It doesn't make any sense, really. So, this respect for self mm -hmm. is immediately respect for all others. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 by knowing oneness. By yeah. knowing that yeah. you're it. Yeah. Once you're not, you know you're it, that's it. Yeah. Why would you attack yourself? Why would you be in conflict with yourself? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So, this great awakening is really a liberation. It's a liberation. It's, yeah. It, you know, and evil... There's no such thing evil. Evil is simply the forgetting that all is one. Okay? Once you forget all is one, then you're going to imagine everything's separate. Then you're going to imagine that there's threats, physical threats, emotional threats, mental threats, sexual threats, financial threats, spiritual threats, religious threats. Then you're going to imagine some sort of threat somewhere, and then, and then you, you, you're going to say, oh, I need to protect myself from that imaginary threat. So I need to gain this belief. I need to take this action. I need to do something. I need to take action so my negative imagination of me being harmed doesn't happen. So we imagine negative harmful things that aren't happening. And then we, and then we take real-time action to prevent that non-happening thing from potentially happening. So, there, so by doing that, we're now treating... The unreal as real, and treating the real as unreal. Now we've flipped reality. Now we're now we're saying the unreal, something that hasn't happened, is happening, and what is happening, is not happening, because because we're taking action on something that hasn't happened. So now we're now we're giving validity to our negative imaginations, and and now we're declaring within ourselves my negative imaginations and my negative imaginary threats are real and true. So that's why I'm going to take. Action to prevent them from happening. Mm. So now we're, the, that is the creation of the false world. Okay, hey, COVID's out there. Hey, I'm at home, I'm fine, I'm safe. But what if, what if I, some, this virus sneaks into my air vents, into my house, into my nose, into my lungs, and in my brain, I die. So I better prevent my imagination from happening by wearing a mask at home. And wiping everything down in my house because my imagination, I believe it's true. I believe my imagination is true. So I'm going to take action against my imagination. My imagination is against, I'm at war with my imagination. Okay, you're at war with your imagination. You're scary image in imagination. You're like, oh my God, i got to prevent my own imagination from attacking me. So now, there, you're, now you're at war with yourself. Like, and, and that first fear will just create other fears. Hey, if you're fearing one thing, well, hey, that's... Why not? Why not fear other things? I'm a, I fear one thing. I might as well fear other things. So that one fear turns into a thousand fears, and th and now those fears dictate where we can go, what we can say, what we can't say, how we express ourselves. You know, it it's just it just puts limits limitation. on like edges. Okay, like if if I'm at a a nightclub and my ex girlfriend is there and uh, I fear seeing her again or just something like like that. And, and I'm all I'm all geared up with my friends and like yo come to the club let's go there and and I'm a little late and they say hey I'll call you from there I'll let you know how how it's going and then I get a call and I'm just, I'm just about ready to go to, to the club and my friends call yo your ex girlfriend's at the club man don't come bro don't come and I, you know so your imagination is like oh man if I go there it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a nightmare and blah, blah. so then you just don't go out. And then your friends have an amazing time. They're like, yo, you should have been there, man. And you're like, whoa, my girlfriend. You know, so our imagination creates these invisible boundaries that 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 we just don't cross physically. And it's kind of like what you said earlier. The fear freezes you in, in the spot. It says, don't move. But if you move, it could be worse. So it's kind of like um, quicksand. Mm -hmm. You go into quicksand, and if you don't move, you just you, you go down you barely move an inch. You're just barely slowly moving down or sinking. But as soon as you move, straight down into the sand pit. So um, it's the not moving um, that that creates this stagnation. Mm. And if our thoughts don't move, 
I mean, think of your muscles. If you don't move your arm or work out for 20 years, or don't even move your legs, you're just laying on your bed for 20 years, what's going to happen to your legs? You, you can't move them anymore, right? So what happens when we have thoughts and beliefs that haven't changed in 20 years? Then you can't even imagine anything new. You can't even use your mind because it's, you haven't used it. You haven't... You don't even know what your mind is capable of doing because all you've been doing is paying attention to the same thing for 20 years. So it is, it is creating an energy blockage. Because the beliefs and ideas just, they create little, like, this is a, energy has to be moving. Energy in motion creates emotion. Energy in motion. Mm -hmm. But if I have energy not in motion, like a big block sitting here, energy is, is trying to get through, there's an emotional block here. So this is going to back up at one point, create some sort of, uh, create a, like, think of air, like condensing pressure more and more. At, at one point, it's going to feel like a little bubble of air there. You're going to feel like a pressure. So the the emotional energy sort of compresses com tighter and tighter and tighter until it creates a physical substance called like a tumor or, you know, some sort of congestion. Congestion or It's resistance. Exactly. The, the resistance creates toxins in the body. And that is perceived as illnesses or sicknesses. So a lot of these viruses or things we get in the, in the body is really our own cells releasing toxins because we are resisting newness and the toxins it's it's kind of like the body has to release the negativity somehow so it releases it to the toxins in the body hopefully the body can flush it out through your liver and kidneys and whatnot but some some people can't so, so the stress creates toxins that end up actually physically shutting down our organs and thyroid and hair loss and memory loss and tumors and fat weight gain, you name it. I mean, death, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, and that's all due to just thinking, imagining threats. Right. Not even a real thing, just imagining it it does that. It's like, so if the channel sucks, if the TV station, if that reality sucks, yeah. just turn imagine of turning the channel, yeah. turn off the, you know, fake news yeah. and turn on the autonomy, the good news, right? Exactly. And that way you're not programming yourself with any destructive limitation. Yeah. You're loving, honoring, respecting yourself. You're having compassion. You're having passion for your life, your own life force. You're having passion for yeah, it. Man. And passion and love, they come together. It's not just unconditional love. Because you can have all the unconditional love in the universe. But if you don't have the passion, what are you going to do with it? Right? you got to be able to move that love. We all do. Um, myself included. I can, I can easily get in a rut and, and feel stagnant and limited and you know get into dis-ease, lack of ease, discomfort, lack of comfort. It's a choice. Now, what am I going to do? How am I going to start my day? Am I going to be in gratitude and appreciation on the power and presence of the universe, of source, experiencing itself fully moment by moment in every brand new moment? And because of knowing that, I'm going to reach out and I'm going to touch others to let them know that I know that we're all awake here and we're all creating this. And then at the same time, we can create a dream together that is autonomous, that is free, freeing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Just like Renee and I, you know, we, we get together, um, basically pick up, pick up the phone. Hey, Renee, you want to do this live stream? I think it'd be really awesome. We'll just talk about dismantling the illusion of the physical reality because if we don't, then that'll cause stagnation and that'll cause more conflict. Source fighting itself, source beating itself up. So, yeah, this experience leads to this great awakening. And you can get it for more than, you know, you can read books like the Tao Jing. You can read Conversations with God. You can read The End of Suffering. You can, this stuff is in books too. And this is not new information. It's been around forever, for, since the very beginning of 
experience mm-hmm. for everything that exists, seen and unseen. Mm-hmm. So yeah, just mm-hmm. just know that we're unlimited. I re- remember when I was a kid, I just loved watching uh, Superman, mm-hmm. and I was like, wow, look at that superhero. He has the strength. He has the confidence. You know, he can see through all this stuff. He's got lasers coming out of his eyes. Mm-hmm. He can go into the sun. All this just amazing, mm-hmm. just wow, unlimited potential, it's right? Unlimited. And so as a kid, we all relate that. What, what, I love watching, you know, Spider-Man, all these comics when I was a kid. Yeah, X-Men and all of them. Man. All this stuff. Yeah. And we still do. Still Marvel comics, awesome stuff. You know, you got every everyone in there that's expressing this whole kind of duality experience, right? Mm-hmm. And in the end, you know, it's a movie, right? So the actors, they take off their costumes yeah. at the end of the... They've done their act. They've done yeah. their scene. Yeah. They take off their car. Then now they hang out. They say, yeah. you know, let's go get some burritos. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's yeah, even uh, in, uh, in junior high and high school, I've had fist fights with guys. And after the fight, we just shook hands and like, hey, it's it's done, man. It's over. Um, so if, if we can let things go... Um, it doesn't have to linger beyond that moment. You know, if I get shot in the arm, boom, a bullet hole or a cut or a wound, I know I've been shot, I know I've been cut, and there's pain there, and I, but I just, I know it's there, I don't, I don't need to keep focusing on it. So once the pain hits, I'm like, oh, there's the pain. And then I just focus my attention elsewhere. I just, I go about my day, like, for example, I've stubbed my toe really hard a, a few times. And since I was a, a young cut, uh, child, my, my mother taught me, just redirect your attention elsewhere. Like, as soon as you get hit, just put your attention elsewhere. So I've been training since I've been a teenager that whenever I stub my toe or get some sort of impact, my body, any any sort of pain or whatever, just acknowledge it. Just, just be like, oh, there it is. And then once I, once I acknowledge it, I just instantly focus somewhere else. Because it's not like me focusing on that for the next 10 minutes or half an hour or four more days or a week is going to help it heal faster or anything. I just go about my day. I just almost ignore it. And literally 90% of the suffering is gone. It's just, I'm not paying attention anymore. It's just in the background. So kind of like um, uh, having a movie playing in the background while you're having a conversation. It's, it's just in, it's in the background. It's there, but you don't, it's not really affecting you. You know, it's just in the background. Right. So along with what Thomas said about the energy and where to focus it is, is, uh, oh, we got it. Thank you. God is unlimited. We want. Yes. John Robbins says, thank you, Renee. God is unlimited and we want God to be limited. Um, to be desire or pref. Okay. We want God to manifest the desire or preferences that, uh, that we want to manifest um, and we often do that. We often take our idea of God and make it into like a human or some sort of personification of what we feel is, you know, the highest qualities or what we prefer. So, um, again, this is really about where we're putting our, our, our attention. And Thomas is saying, hey, you know what, rather than putting your, your uh, attention on on this issue with the media or this issue with the, uh, you know, your, your, your sufferings or problems, start putting your energy and intention on something that really can unlock yourself from the story. It's, it, if there's one thing I would say to you to uh, help alleviate suffering, it would be um, hmm, that... We have to view life as unreal because if we think it's real, then we'll, then we won't think there's any way to change it. Like if we think it's real and solid and unchangeable, there's, then we're stuck. That's like prison. So we have to realize that life is, is, uh, not real in the fact that it's, uh, ah, uh, yes, that's right. I don't I'm glad you got the message, uh, John. How are you doing, my friend? 
Ah, so yeah, reality is unreal. So all these stories, all the images in your mind are unreal. Everything in your mind is unreal. Okay, it it seems to be real. It, all these experiences, like grabbing the phone right now and like putting it in my ear, it sees it feels real. It looks real to you. It looks real here, yet it's unreal. It's simply just a hallucination of your own imagination. And so our imagination can go into many directions. You can go into negatively fear, this, this, and that. Just trust me, take your imagination to the next level because when you were a child, it was infinite. And right now, it's li it seems to be limited. Once we let go of that limitation, magic. It's just boom. It's as simple as that. So then maybe a, it may be all at once, maybe tomorrow morning or next four months from now or a year from now, boom, one moment is just you're, you're just in a heavenly state. Or it could be a gradual process. For me, it seemed to be I left heaven in one snap. Boom. For some people, it's gradual, their, their, their descent out of heaven into this world. For me, it was all at once. And for some people to snap into the heavenly state back again, or the unity, it's in one fell, it's in one big bang. And for some people, it's very gradual. So for me, for this experience here, it seems to be a uh, more gradual return um, to that unity, so I can experience every step of the way full awareness, which is what I wanted to. And the descent out of uh, the heavenly worlds was very quick for me. But there are some people who go into that unity very quickly. Big. And it's really just the ending of the dream. It's the ending of this story as of being a human. So it's not like the, the this character can ever wake up. This character will never wake up. That character will never wake up. What happens is this character and this character, the dream ends of this character. Boom. And infinity is there. Like just, oh. You're like, oh, I just... It's kind of looking at a puzzle, staring at one piece for your whole life, and and you think that's all there is until someone grabs your head and pulls it up a little higher, and you can see there's a thousand pieces, and you're like, whoa, what was I worrying about? This one piece, man, a thousand pieces here, and then you're like, hey, everyone, there's Earth is a thousand pieces big, and they're like, what are you talking about? It's only one piece, and you're like, man, you people are sheeple. You don't know what you're talking about. Then someone comes up to you a year, a year later and pulls your head up even further. And there's 10,000 pieces. You're like, whoa, I thought there was only 1,000 pieces. So now your reality is bigger. And now every year, every month, day, year, it's the, you're adding a decimal place. It's going up the market. There's a trillion pieces. You're like, whoa, how big is this thing? And I, just a year ago, you thought there's only one piece of life. So you can see how life is just this expanding thing that just the big, the, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and the higher up you go, the more you can see it at one glance. Like if you're in a hot air balloon, you can see the whole, all of New York City in one glance. Boom. But if you're on the ground level, you can't see anything. There's just people walking everywhere. You can't see anything. You can see maybe two feet in front of you. There's, there's a big arm in your way and a big briefcase. But as you go up, even five feet, you can see 30 miles in every direction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the power of, of higher perspective. When you change the way you look at things, things the things change. that you look at change. Yeah. This is um, a quote from, uh, uh, let's see, the guy who said, the total number of minds in the universe is one. Yes. Uh, it's not, totally. it's, that's, that's really where we're at, you know. Yeah, there's one mind, there's one soul, and one ego. Erwin Schrodinger. Yeah, so check him out. And... Uh, you're talking about this infinite experience. Um, Jill Bolte Taylor wrote this book, Stroke of Insight. She had this stroke, and she kept on going back and forth from, oh, I'm a body, I have to save my life, phoning for help, yeah. to, oh, I'm the entire universe. I'm expanded into infinity. Yeah. And then she kept on going back and forth. Yeah. And then she ended up, eventually after like 45 minutes, being able to dial the phone number to call for help. Mm. And, you know, it's a good book, too. It's, yes. There's lots of amazing stories. I've had a friend of mine that passed away. He physically died, mm. meaning he had no electricity yeah. in his body. And he went through a tunnel, and he experienced all of 
the negative things that he did to others. Mm -hmm. Meaning, if he inflicted suffering on someone, if he got somebody addicted, you know, he was a part of getting somebody addicted to drugs or he beat somebody up, you know, he felt every punch. He felt the what it feels like to be addicted to drugs or whatever, whatever it was. Yeah. That was hell from him. And he said he never wanted to go through that again. That was just the worst thing ever. But it really woke him up. Mm -hmm. And the second part of the tunnel, it was him experiencing all the good things he did. So Mm -hmm. his marriage, his love for his family, helping people out, you know, being a good, just just a noble citizen. And then at the end of the tunnel, there was a mountaintop, two chairs, his grandfather's there, because that was, you know one of his role models. Mm-hmm. So he, his grandfather was waiting for him. And then he sat down next to his grandfather in this empty chair. And he was like, his grandfather's like, you know where you are. He's like, well, definitely I'm not in the body. So he says, now you have the opportunity. You can stay here or you can be something else or you can go back. Cause you're, he was in a, he was riding a bicycle and his, uh, he got hit by a vehicle and his <laughs> punctured lung. And so his, his body was still in a physical state that could be recovered. Yes. So then he got the opportunity to go back into his body. Of course, freaked everybody out in the hospital because they declared him as dead already. And he came back to life, <clears throat> freaked them out. And uh, he said, you know, since he had that experience, he has this gift now mm-hmm. of like things really work when he's in a positive mood, things work really, really good yeah. in his favor. And then if he's not in a good mood, things break around him. And I was over at his house and there was this pile of broken down printers and oh, computers. Yeah. And so I joked with him and said, were you in a bad mood? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a couple times. Yeah. I said, well, you better make sure you're in a good mood anytime you go flying on a plane, right? Yeah. So, and um, you know, we actually are infinite for for life force power, right? Now, when we go through these incredible experiences, it like opens us up so we have less resistance. So he literally, you know, left physicality, Mm -hmm. was infinity in the formlessness and returned to physicality. And knowing that is a very powerful thing because now he's not afraid of death anymore. And I've totally... Um, before age of 12 and even beyond that I've, there's no number to put on it but I've experienced hundreds of thousands of different dimensions of diff- different life forms different environments and being different di- objects not even being human being drain pipes and being tubes and being walls and wood and mountains and cars and I've been like all other things that you would think are not alive but they're alive as I've been you know I've been different uh, sort of shapes per se but um, the knowing like the absolute knowing that there's other worlds and dimensions that earth is really one channel think of our minds as like a, a radio station that has unlimited channels right you got the dial from zero all the way to infinity and you know every micro you know decimal place is a whole new dimension right you just one 88.9.0142567. Go there, one world. One click to another station, another world, completely different world. There's infinite amount of worlds, infinite things, infinite experiences going on right now. Like we all have access to it. Like totally. Like you don't have to earn it. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to it just we're already perfect. We are it. it. We're it. Stop. I guess that's one of the things that I, I'd be saying. Stop the seeking immediately. Stop seeking for God. Stop. Stop trying to get the God. Stop trying to enlighten. Stop trying to ascend. To stop everything. Whatever you're looking for is right here, right now. Not in the future. Not four months from now. Not oh, once I do this, once I let go of the trauma, or once I let go that belief or get my certificate or whatever, then I'll be ready for it or I'll be awake and enlightened or, you know, no, right now. I don't care what you think about yourself or what you think about the world. Your awakeness is source right now. 
period. Yes, you already are what you're looking for. So the the act of looking for God, reading books, try meditating, like, oh, maybe next week I'll get the download or the event will come and wake me. Forget all that nonsense. Right now is where everything happens. Everything. you When you get cut, it happens now. When you heal, it happens now. When you eat, it happens now. When you go to the bathroom, it happens now. Everything happens now. Everything. When you watch a movie, it happens now. Like, period. So that this experience of just your regular life, whatever you call this life is yours, that is, it, that is a oneness. Oneness is, is having that experience. Oneness wants that experience. Okay? This is oneness. This is oneness. It's just that oneness likes to experience limitation, likes to experience being a body, it likes to experience crazy drama for a while, and then it brings itself back to oneness. Okay? So don't don't go see, don't go try and spend money, go all this crazy stuff to try and find God or get it, you know, f- pay twenty thousand dollars to get activated or some crazy one week session. This is it. Like this right now is it. So now just get used to to say, hey, I, I'm this awakeness, I'm this awareness. Okay, I'm gonna turn around inside my body. So rather than me facing out there, I'm gonna just inside my body, I'm gonna turn around and look at this this imagination, this this vast world, this vast thing behind these eyes. That away that's God, that's source. Not what's in front of the eyes. Okay? Not the body or anyone else or some amazingly amazingly look beautiful woman or amazing dude or whatever. Like you, God is not in a form. It's not a shape. It's not a person. It's not a thing. It, okay? It's there. There's nobody to awaken. There's simply, it's all. This this is source. Exactly. <laughs> there's no one to awaken. If everyone's already awake, just pretending, pretending they're not awake. It's just a game of pretend. It, but it's very convincing because it's it's vivid. It's like source had amnesia, and yeah. then oh, hey. No, I remember what I am. Yeah, it's, it's just source playing with it. It's playing hide and go see. This is playing hide and go see. This is it. This is the big game of hide and go see. It's just infinite. It's just, it, the game is infinite. It's not limited, and that anything goes. Anything. It doesn't matter. You, you got the worst mass murders, the worst machines. You know the, that eat a thousand, you know, a million human bodies per minute down a grinder. Like it. None of that even matters. It's all the same thing and doing everything. So it's all it's almost like everything is made of sand. Okay? And I make a human and I make a dog and I make a cat and I make a bird and I make everything, all these different shapes. And someone who comes along confused would say, Oh, look at all these different things. But someone who's awakened would say, Hey, it's all made of the same thing. It's all made of sand, man. They're like, No, it it's made of all these all these all these things are different. Like, no, they're all here, watch. I'll just crush Ten, I'll just crush ten men right now to, to show you it's all made of sand. And you just crush ten little human figures of sand. Boom! You just killed six, you just killed six people! You just crushed them! Oh my god! I... No, buddy. It's all made of sand. It's not a real person. It's Okay? That's what it is. It's, it's like all this stuff is made out of God. This stuff. This. This stuff. This is God stuff. This is made out of God. This is all God. Like, this is God. This is God. So there's nothing made out of anything. Like, it's all made out of God. So the, who's dying? No one. Who's, who, who's getting the virus? No one. Who's going to jail? No one. Who's going on the internet? No, no one is doing anything. There is no one. There's simply source, which is life. Life is doing everything. Life is doing everything. You're doing nothing. You're just watching life play itself out. Endless, nameless. Never ending story. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so hey, much man. for having me, man. This has been a, a lot of fun. And I want to thank everybody for joining us live. This has been a lot of fun just chatting here. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really, um, as one of the highest excitements, this type of information, sharing this, it's just uh, just so autonomous. Just love it. Mm-hmm. So um, I'd like to give you my website. You can check out my website and just my YouTube channel and see some more of it lectures I'm having absolutely uh, the YouTube channel is youtube.com forward slash inner soul tech that's I N N E R S O U L T E C H inner soul tech and uh, I'm on Facebook Facebook uh, just type in Renee Hamilton that's R E N E 
Hamilton, and then you'll see the nickname Power of Soul uh, as underneath her name. And then my website uh, for my products, inventions, and quantum interdimensional technologies is innersoultech.com. That's I-N-N-E-R-S-O-U-L-T-E-C-H. And you can see all my uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of different uh, devices and technological advances that I made to help this journey and help us ride smoothly along this journey uh, to self-awakening. So, yeah. So this is a gut pen, and I have one of them. And I've got another one here. So just different things I got. Oops. Oh, yes. That's right. That's right. Thank you so much, Susie. Perfect. Perfect. So, yeah, uh, definitely uh, contact me if you uh, have any uh, questions or concerns or want to have a consultation uh, session to snap your mind out of the illusion and go from there and make sure to check out uh, Thomas's. Yeah, thank you. Experience. I just want to thank everybody for joining us today for the ultimate autonomy experience. And thank you, Renee, for just yeah, sharing this information yeah, with information. Yeah. Yeah. Information. Or information. Yeah. And, and uh, do you mind telling them what, what autonomy is or what that word means? So to be autonomous, pure autonomy, that is complete freedom. Being completely free, autonomous. And uh, yeah, it's it's basically infi infinite. What we're talking about yeah. being limitless—that's yeah. autonomy. And so, and knowing that and being that pure autonomy—that's what we are. Um, the endless, nameless, and source experiencing itself. So yeah, thanks everybody. Stay tuned for more, and just enjoy each and every one hundred percent brand new moment of now. Yeah. All right. Cheers, everybody. Take care.